Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Grilling JR with the voice of professional wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. Jim, how are you, man? I'm great, Connie. Just coming off that show uh, Wednesday night in Daly's Place. Still buzzing. Had a great time. Uh, enjoyed being back uh, there. Brought back uh, some amazing memories. You know, we, we were there to largely uh, honor the memory of uh, Brody Lee. Yes, sir. John Huber. And that was a very nice, uh, experience. He was very popular, obviously one of the most popular guys we've ever had a super dude and a hell of a worker. Uh, so anyhow, I, I, uh, we, it, it all went off, off real well. I think people had cried enough. I think I didn't see, I didn't see too much uh, emotion in that regard, but the memories that he, that John Huber created. Uh, will never go away. So it was all good stuff. So it was a fun night at Daly's big crowd. And, uh, I got to call the main event, which if you didn't watch the show. It's pretty good, uh, piece of business. Good match for me, Connie being, you know, I realized late in the afternoon when I found out what I was going to do, that I was going to be calling that, that main event was staying involved in it, which just made my night because, you know, I, I hadn't had a chance to to do that, uh, since all this development of his retirement and stuff has come around, right. You and I were talking before we went on the air, about how many tickets were left in Greensboro and there weren't many work, right? I don't remember what you said there was. Yeah. According to wrestle ticks, they've distributed 15,314, which means based on their current setup, they have 119 tickets left. Uh, if you take a look at the map though, it does look like they could expand and open up a few more seats. Um, We'll see though. I mean, here's the reality. It's going to be one of the bigger crowds in AEW history. Everybody wants to be there for Sting's last match. And I know you do too. We talked yeah. several yeah. weeks ago about, you know, my wish is that you would be on that call with Tony Schiavone. Like you guys were there for the first sting flare match at the original right. clash of the champions in 88. It would be cool. Let's get the band back together. Flair's going to be in Sting's corner. So it makes sense to me that you and Tony would be on the call. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Me too. Me too. I mentioned that to Tony Khan last night. He agreed. It's only per it's only right. It makes sense. I said, you know, God dang it. Mother nature's going to tag in somewhere along the way with two old timers like Shivani and I We're both feeling good. I'm feeling better like today than I felt in uh, a long time. You know, I still got the wound on my ankle. I'm seeing my doctor on Friday to go over an MRI just to double check. I didn't have any bone disease on my tibia. Uh, so I'm going to go to, I have a doctor's appointment on Friday morning to go over all that deal. And, uh, so I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I just had a great night. I mean, it was one of those really feel good nights. I got there early, which I never do. And, uh, got to meet, talk to a lot of people. I found a lot of young, young wrestlers who had not been around me, had a plethora of questions. Awesome. You know, do you watch this? You watch that? What do you think of this deal? What do you think of, you know, and I try to help them. I try to answer, answer their questions, honestly, and, uh, give them hope. That's what they're all looking for. They're right. looking for positive reinforcement. It's real simple. So, uh, anyway, it was a good night. It's been a, it's been a busy week, man. Conrad, our, our football world is upside down, turned around. Boy, you don't kidding your man in Alabama. I, I, I was shocked. Somebody came in yesterday afternoon and said, did you hear Saban retired? And I thought they were just BSing me. Right. Cause I had no, uh, I had no, I didn't, I hadn't heard any rumblings that he was thinking about tagging out, but, uh, I mean, there's not much more he can accomplish. I, I think he's going to retire if he wanted the title or he didn't win the title. He yeah. apparently had his mind made up. The rumor in any window about this retirement started midway through the season. And there were whispers all throughout the season. There was another whisper that perhaps this was a decision that he made based on a health issue for his lovely wife, Mrs. Terry Saban. Ooh. Of course that has not been addressed. No one has said that. Uh, but that is certainly the, the narrative that's going around in certain circles, but what an incredible run, man. Uh, Ooh. six national championships at Alabama, seven total. Uh, I mean, he had 
more first round picks than he had losses at Alabama, 44 first round picks, 29 losses. Is that uh, amazing? An unbelievable. I mean, he has more national championships than anyone in history. And it's crazy to think that once upon a time, you know, he sat under the learning tree of Bill Belichick. Of course, they were both on the same staff together in Cleveland years ago. And right. Cleveland was the top guy and, and Nick was running the, the defense. And one day after Saban announces that he's retiring, Bill Belichick parts ways with the Patriots. I, I never saw this coming as football junkies. This is like, this would be like Hogan and flair retiring back to back days or something crazy like that. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it's a similar, similar situation. Uh, yeah, it's, it's changed the landscape of football. You know, like there's eight, I think there's eight NFL vacancies right now as, as you and I record this on Thursday morning. Uh, so I, I, uh, I, it's just a lot of movement. There's going to be, it's, it's going to be some, and they're all key hires. I mean, they're, everybody's realizing now you just, you gotta be careful who you hire and you gotta have a vision, but at the end of the day, talent wins games. That's right. So, so some of those teams that have no head coach right now, don't have great rosters either. So that's something that's got to be addressed by their ownership. It puts a lot of pressure on the general managers. I think that's what's going to, we're going to be reading about the GMs are going to be held or going to be asked to be, to be held to a higher standard. And, uh, that's the most important hire you got your head, your GM and your head coach and a quarterback. So, uh, I know Jacksonville, uh, they, they got rid of all their defensive staff, everybody. And I don't know what else, who else are going to be moving. I'm, sh I'm sure it's not over, but it's, uh, it's just, that you got to make changes. You got to make hard decisions. And that's what they, they all these teams are having to do right now. We also saw the, uh, Michigan Wolverines win their first national championship since I think like 1948 or something crazy like that. I mean, maybe that's not right, but first one in a long time. And yeah. we saw all the rumor and innuendo about Mr. Harbaugh that perhaps he too is going to join an NFL coaching ranks. W what do you uh, expect? Do you think there's any chance he's back? I mean, it almost feels like a foregone conclusion with all the talking heads on ESPN and things that. He's going to the NFL. Is that what you see as well? I think so. I think uh, Harbaugh's NFL bound. It's like, what do you do to top what you just accomplished? Yeah. Uh, you know, 15 wins, no losses, national championship, uh, in a dominating fashion. Uh, they were, you know, much improved. Uh, and Har Harbaugh's, a, you know, he's, he's a character. He'll sell tickets. He's a good, he's a good PR guy. He's a good motivator. He knows football. Uh, and somebody, I think the, the, the city I've heard him most identified with is San Diego or LA. So that, uh, that could be real. I think that could certainly be real, but all, I think a lot of teams in the NFL are going to seek out Harbaugh. Oh yeah. He's hot, right? He's hot right now. He's a, he's on a roll. He's got momentum. And he's got a track record. He's got a track record in NFL. He went to three NFL title, NFC title games, played in the Super Bowl against his brother. So I think that uh, the NFL is just an obvious uh, move for him. I met him one time. I went to uh, the Bear Bryant uh, Coaches Award Show in Houston. My buddy Wallace Marsh was the uh, one of the chair people of that committee, and uh, went to the at a hotel. And, uh, I remember walking into a hotel lobby bar and Harbaugh was sitting in there with some of his buddies. Uh, he, and he, and I walked in and he said, it's going to be a slobber knocker. Harbaugh so he did. Was, yeah. Harbaugh did. That's awesome. So I, that was kind of cool. Uh, that let me puff my chest out a little bit. Sure. But he's, he's a great guy. And I can see him being a tremendous recruiter. He's just a good communicator. Yeah. We've talked to a, a lot you, on the show about wrestling and, and other things, you know, communication is the key, man. It really is. It's that simple. And he's a great communicator, identifies well with the kids. Uh, but boy, he had, him, he had himself a hell of a football team. I'll tell you that. I, I thought that if Penix, the quarterback for Washington could get hot, he could keep his team in the game, but hell he had no time to throw. That's right. 
you know, that's, they talk about, you know, quarterbacks getting moved off their spot. You know, that's what, uh, Michigan did defensively with, uh, with, um, Penix jr. Quarterback, uh, just, uh, you know, it was just simple football. If you don't have time to throw, you're not going to complete many passes. And we can shut down your – and because Washington had three great receivers. They got three receivers probably all going to the NFL. So we'll see how that, how that all works out. You know, Pete Carroll leaving Seattle was a surprise to me. Oh, yeah. He's been a fi- fixture there so long. And he's another guy that, you know, you just didn't hear, well, he's thinking about leaving or he's thinking about retiring or whatever. Because last week, uh, in a, or maybe his exit interview, I'm not sure. But he, he espoused his love for coaching and what he did for a living. And it just seemed like, you know, he's 72. That's the irony. I'm 70. I got, I was 72 on January 3rd, saving 72. Belichick is 72. So I look at that as motivation for me that I can still stay in the game of what I do for a living, uh, at this age, I'm feeling better than I felt, you know, that, that blood sugar issue is a. Boy, if you got, if you got any history of blood sugar issues in your family, you know, the, the worst thing you can do is check your, check your levels and a doctor can help you with that deal, uh, or a minor emergency clinic. You need to find out if you got any issues with your blood. And I didn't do that forever. And I almost waited too long. You know, my, my, and this is a, it's a, it's a, it's a strange situation. I didn't have a lot of knowledge of diabetes. Uh, but I can tell you that it started at 300, which is stroke level 300. And then, uh, I got to feel really weird ago about five days ago, uh, lightheaded, just not right. So it's not right here. And I checked my blood sugar level. It was 67. So the bottom had fallen out. Oh, wow. I, was, I, I had low blood sugar and I was feeling like I needed to call nine one one. I didn't, it's funny. I didn't have any orange juice. They say, you know, you drink, drink orange juice. If you're feeling, have low blood sugar. Right. I do now I've gone to the store and I've got orange juice in my fridge. So I wants to come over and have a drink. Uh, but I, uh, I don't know. I, I just, it's just a crazy damn deal. I, I, I didn't have any orange juice as I said. So what I did, Conrad, I improvised. I ate a pop tart. <laughs> loaded with sugar baby and you know as you would expect and uh that kind of took the edge off but uh here but at, since then it's been like uh you know 150 140 and my doctor wants me to keep it under 200 and that's kind of what the goal is so thus far we're being able to accomplish that but more those those low blood sugar days are, are rough and I don't, I've only had two, but now I'm prepared to com- combat them qu- quite frankly. So, and that's one of the reasons I don't, I'm not traveling. I'm not, I'm not going on the Jericho's cruise. I just didn't have the courage to, to get that isolated, even though I know they got a ship's doctor, but is that doctor, he or she prepared to handle a 72 year old guy with diabetes? I don't know that. And I'm not going to try to find out the hard way. So, uh, I'm going to miss that unfortunately, but I, I know everybody will have a good time. They got a pack loaded roster. Jericho was at dynamite last night. I didn't even see, I, I saw him. He did a, that, that run in type yep, thing. I did. So I, I, I was in a different part of the building, a little bitty room dressing, uh, with our, with the other announcers and the coaches, we all shared a room. And, uh, that's, it's not a bad thing. You know, you want a bathroom in your locker room. We didn't have a bathroom in our locker room. So that was a little bit of an inconvenience, but just small little things. And, uh, so anyway, it was, it was good. I, I had, I had a good time. I, Samoa Joe looked good in a suit. Hell yeah, he did. I thought he looked really classy. He's taking this title and responsibilities thereof very seriously, very uh, serious. I'm just very seriously. And I mean it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so anyhow, uh, yeah, he was, <laughs> he looked good. And, and, uh, uh, I thought, uh, Willie, uh, look, uh, powerhouse Hobbs, 
uh, look great physically. He still works on his body like a relentlessly, which is something he needs to do. So, uh, but I, 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 uh, I liked it. I like what we did last night. It was fun. Super fun show. And of course, another fun show coming up this Friday night, rampage, Jim Ross will be on rampage. So don't you dare miss it tomorrow night. And of course, Saturday night, there is a collision. Chris Jericho and others will be in action. Um, and listen, the, the beat goes on, you know, the, the March to Royal rumble to elimination chamber to stings last match. It's going to be a big first quarter in the wrestling business. And yeah. you don't want to miss any of the AEW events. Tickets are on sale now at AEWTIX.com. Uh, that's AEWTIX.com. We should mention the young bucks are back. Uh, and, right. and in addition to that, this was, I believe your first chance to, uh, do go to an AEW show. So to post Raphael Morphy and maybe one of the first times that you were there when, uh, when flair was back, how was, yeah. uh, how was your interaction with Mr. Flair at, uh, AEW? Oh, Dynamite? good, good. Connie is fine. You know, uh, he was seemed to be a little pre, uh, distracted. Uh, I think that he's, uh, I, I think in the, at the end of the day, he's happy to be around all the talent. Uh, and you know, they, 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 they pawn on, they fawn, what do you fawn? Uh, you know, he's probably one of the most popular guys in the building cause the talents grew up watching him and hearing that he's the greatest of all time. And I'm not going to disagree with that at all. Right. So he seemed like he, there were times where he had a good time. Uh, I, he was, but he was always talking to somebody. Uh, so, uh, but it's an interesting pairing. He sting and Darby with the Nate, uh, it should be, they'll, I'm, I'm sure that the, uh, presentation in Greensboro is going to be spectacular. You know, it's going to be great. So what do you think about the, 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 the rumor and innuendo that it's going to be sting and Darby against the young bucks at revolution or the young bucks that's probably as good of an opponent as you could get for staying in Darby. No. I think so. I don't have a problem with it. You know, you know, you're going to get second guessed by today's uh, social media world, no matter who you put, put to sting and Darby against young bucks, uh, are trying to kind of reinvent themselves. You can tell by their attire, their appearance. Uh, they, I thought they cleaned it up pretty good. Got the little mustaches and, and uh, so forth. Uh, they're looking to, for a fresh start and, uh, that's one way to do it. People are going to say, well, what if they, so what if they don't want to put so-and-so over? I, I don't, I don't look at it that way. This is your job. And so tonight your job requires you to lose. Let's roll. Let's go. You know, I hadn't thought oh. about that, but I do want to ask you about that. Like, you know, there is uh, I think Vince McMahon used to call it the time honored tradition right. uh, in wrestling. Would you, right. if, if this was your call and I know it's not, but if this was your call, would you have sting who has an undefeated streak in, in AEW? would you have him keep that intact and retire undefeated in AEW, or is, yeah. is the way to do it to have him lose his last match? No, I, 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 I hearken back to my disagreement with be, beating the undertaker at WrestleMania with yep. Brock Lesnar. It wasn't necessary. And, uh, I still don't agree with that decision, but in any event, it, it, it has happened and people kind of forgot about it, moved on a little bit until guys like me and you bring it up. Uh, but I, I, uh, I really, I, I, I like what they're doing with sting. Sting needs to be in a tag. That's going to be stupid. Uh, he's he'll, he'll feel more confident. Uh, the match will have more action. Uh, you know, he's not no kid. What is he? 60. Yeah. He's older so, than 60. Uh, yeah. Is he? Mm -hmm. He looks great. I mean, he's in great shape. He's always been a workout warrior since he and Luger owned that gym in Atlanta. Main event so, fitness, baby. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. So good. Good job, Connie. Uh, so no, I, I don't have a problem with, it. I like the tag set formula. Uh, you know, again, I don't have anything to say about it. I don't, I do my best work when I don't, when I'm not loaded with preconceived notions and, and, and information. It, it's a game to me. It's a, it's like a, it's a performance. I get that. And I agree with that, but it's also 
you know, I've done enough ball games in my life, football, XFL, this, that, and the other, that, you know, I, they didn't ever tell us who was going to go over in the XFL games. So, uh, I'm, I'm a big uh, believer. You just, you should react naturally and organically. And that's kind of what I, how I kind of handle it. I find out what I'm doing when I get there. What, what do you want me to do today? And well, we're going to have you call the main event in dynamite. Oh, and by the way, would you mind doing rampage? There's Friday night. And I said, of course not. You know, so that was work. That was a chance to work with Tony and Excalibur. I believe, and I maybe this might be ego talking. Uh, I think, uh, I, I don't know how to say this. That sound like a turd. I think there's money in Shivani and I working together. Yes. Not, uh, not just in Greensboro, but going forward, uh, sporadically. Uh, so, uh, it, and, and we have great chemistry. It's, we've never lost that. It's like, it's, it's like if they brought Lawler in and Lawler was healthy, uh, that, you know, how that, how that would work. Well, it'd be a natural transition. That's what we do. That's how we work. That's who we are. So, uh, but Shivani and I have that chemistry. I can tell you this, if, if he and I are doing the, uh, match with sting and company cast of thousands, perhaps, uh, I will, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I just, I'm just, I believe it's the right thing to do. And uh, I think the young bucks are, are excellent opponents. They could bump, uh, they're, they're not, they're, they're not dangerous. They're not too heavy handed. Uh, and uh, I think as those kids grew up as wrestling fans, uh, I'd bet money that they were big sting fans at some point. Of course. So it's a, it's a, it's a big deal for them to get this opportunity. And I'm sure they're going to take it as such. They're good kids. They, uh, I enjoyed, I visited them a lot on, uh, in, in Jacksonville, uh, this week. So, but it was good. It was good. I think that'll be that, that show is selling much more rapidly than I ever perceived. I thought it would do well. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't know it's going to do this well because Greensboro has not been on fire. It's not been the old Greensboro where you sell out 20,000 seats at the Coliseum. It's just been a, it's been a cold town. And so when, uh, they decided to put it in Greensboro, the stings last match in this pay-per-view, I was a little, uh, surprised pleasantly, but surprised because I didn't think the market would, would hold up, but I was wrong and the market's holding up very well. And as you mentioned, Connie, it's, it's, uh, one of those scenarios where it's going to do so much better than we perceived. It's going to make for a great, uh, pay-per-view, uh, live audience. And, uh, it, for most guys like myself, it's an honor to be a part of that card because our, our overwhelming respect for Steve Borden, AKA sting, uh, it's just a, it's just a tremendous, uh, I, I like the way that he's going out in that regard. And I also like the fact that, uh, AEW and Tony Khan are smart enough to figure out that, you know, uh, uh, that it's, a, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think here, just get all this out. I'm sort of burned out this morning. Uh, but I, I think that, uh, it, it's just going to be a perfect night. I really do believe that. And I don't know. And I know there's going to be a lot of conjecture and discussion about the opponents. Is this the right choice of the bucks, the right team? I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. Not even one apprehension. So they, they look, they're looking to reintroduce themselves into the game, the, the workplace, so to speak. And, uh, let's go do it. Uh, I, I'm excited about it. I just, I need to get signed up and so I can be there. Uh, so that's, that's where I am with that deal. Well, I'm excited, uh, to be there. It's going to be a big show. Tickets are on sale now. AEWTIX.com. You can also, are you going Connie? I'm not sure that I'll be at that show. I might be, uh, if I can, you know, Raphael used to be my hookup for tickets. So, uh, I got to figure out how that works now. Cause if they're sold out, maybe I know a guy, I don't know. Uh, but I know they're going to be the go home dynamite is actually here in my hometown of Huntsville, Alabama. So we'll be really? hanging out that week. Can't wait to do it. And of course, when you think about sting, I always think about nitro 
And this feels like a great opportunity to remind everybody that we got a brand new series coming out at adfreeshows.com called beyond nitro. It's a new monthly series from guy Evans. He's the author of that fabulous nitro book that we've been talking about for years and beyond nitro will feature in-depth exclusive long form articles, each expounding upon as the name might suggest many of the key elements, themes, and stories discussed in the book nitro. Maybe if reading's not really your thing, well, each piece will also be narrated by guy. It'll be available in both audio and video form. And on the debut episode, guy's going to examine wrestling nostalgia. Why has fans interest in the Monday night wars, for example, lasted so long. And will there be that same level of interest 20 years from now for today's product? What's changed? What hasn't changed? And why does it matter? Check out beyond nitro this January exclusively at adfreeshows.com. And our topic today, Jim is a good one. You know, we're talking about, you know, the way things used to be with the first clash of the champions in Greensboro. And we're also going to be talking about nitro on adfreeshows.com, but another stop in the road for you, new Japan. We're going to be talking all about your relationship with new Japan. And I suppose really the first time that becomes a possibility is when you leave WWE in 2013. So by all means, go out of your way to check out our episode where we talked about that not too long ago, the 2013 retirement available in the archives, but you would actually start podcasting right after that as well. The Ross report for podcast one. Uh, you would even start doing some boxing play by play and color, if you will, for golden boy promotions in 2014, you even got a chance to do an MMA show with Chael Sonnen. I mean, it looks like you were trying a few different things here. Had you been anxious to do this and your WWE contract just never afforded you the opportunity since maybe the XFL? Yeah, just, yeah yes, yes. I, I, I'm always looking for new projects and, uh, uh, being, away from a, a contract with WWE was giving me that opportunity. Uh, so there's Vince calling right now. Yeah. I well, can't come to the 14th. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the uh, date your contracts up on uh, Valentine's day? Yeah. <laughs> well, how about that? that, that that's going to be a pretty sweet renewal for Mr. Tony Khan. I would imagine. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I, I, I like to finish up in AEW. You know, I got to be realistic about things. Connie is these talk about these birthdays. And I'm the same age as Saban and Belichick and all these cats. Uh, and I, I, I just, uh, I love the, I, I, lo I love working with them. All right. Tell them it'll so, be the uh, 15th. Yeah. I'll <laughs> see you for, see the 15th. Uh, so anyhow, sorry for the interruption kids. I should just mute the goddamn thing. Uh, but I don't know if I know how. So, uh, anyhow, it's all good. All good. Uh, I, you were excited I, to try new things, whether it was boxing or MMA, yeah, or football, I, all I, that. I, yeah. Uh, Cause I liked all those things. I liked boxing. I had a great time doing boxing. Uh, I, I, I got a chance to do some boxing with the great Al Bernstein. Uh, arguably the greatest color, uh, uh, boxing analyst, uh, in Ever. history of television. Yeah. Yeah. And we became great friends, Al and I, I think Conrad going forward. And it certainly includes the staff, uh, our, our buddy, Adam, uh, uh, at, uh, access TV, Adam uh, Swift. Yeah. Adam, yeah. Swifty Swifty was a great ally for me. He helped get me hired. He was a fan of my work. He saw I was available. Uh, somebody, I don't know if they called me or called Barry, Barry Bloom, my erstwhile agent. I'm not sure how that, I can't remember exactly the imaginations, but I, it, it, I think he might've been Adam called me to see if I was to measure my interest in, in uh, getting back in the pro wrestling game. And of course I was, I, you know, it's easy to say, well, all JR was doing was chasing paydays. Okay. Is that a crime? Is that bad? No, I think so. So, uh, uh, that's kind of how that, that worked. That's how the, the start was. I, I really was unsure of the start. And one of the great things that helped me 
was teaming with Josh Barnett, who was a former IWGP champion. Uh, he might've been their youngest champion ever back in the day. And, but he was very familiar with all the names, pronunciations, uh, the names of the venues, all these type stuff. He was an amazing asset for me to get my feet back on the ground with a whole new talent roster where there was a language issue. <laughs> so, uh, I, I had a, I just, I think making new friends and new business associates, uh, are, it's just great. And that's what we did. That's, that's that, to me, that's kind of how that worked out. We, uh, we should also mention that there was lots of rumors when this was going on that you were leaving WWE and, and doing some boxing and doing some MMA. Of course, everybody online was thinking, well, a lot of other guys, when they leave WWE, they find themselves in the impact zone for TNA wrestling yeah. Did that get very far. Did your conversations get very far in 2013? Not really. Uh, Dixie Carter flew to, uh, her family was having a weekend. I think it was a Memorial day or something like that. It was a holiday and they, uh, they have a, a ranch in North Texas, which is about, a uh, uh, 30 minute plane ride from Norman, believe it or not, uh, on their plane. So they came there and picked me up and, uh, uh and took me down to the ranch. I spent the day there talking to Mr. And Mrs. Carter, hanging around with Dixie, talking about the business. And, uh, I always fall back on that old, uh, Bill Parcells uh, thing. You want me to cook the dinner? You got to let me buy some of the groceries Yeah, and I got to have, I got to have more. It sounds egocentric, but it, it's just self-preservation. I got to have some, some influence on who's on the roster. If I'm going to be responsible for their productivity, you got to let me pick some pieces here. So they weren't so, just talking to you about doing commentary. They were wanting you to have an office position as well. Yeah. 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 If I was going to go, Connie, the only way I was going to go is to be in charge. I got you at that stage of my life and my, and the game and all this other stuff and my administrative work in WWE certainly, uh, they qualified me for that, for that role. No doubt. But she just didn't feel comfortable, uh, you know, in, in uh, and moving me in that direction. Yeah. They were very, the, the, the commentary was a no brainer, right? That was, that was easy. It'd probably be Tanae and I on that team, not no disrespect for the late Don West. Uh, he may have been out there too. Hell, I don't know. Yeah. I never got that far. So, uh, but I had a great visit with the, I like the Carters. I, I can see myself working for them in that era and enjoying it. So, uh, it just was, it just wasn't meant to be at that point in time. You know, I, Dixie and I are friends. We still are friends. When I go to Nashville, I, she and I turn to go to lunch. Uh, I enjoy visiting with her. I admire what she's accomplished in a, in a man's world. Uh, and I shudder to think how many times that talents have tried to outwork her and take advantage of the situation. That's just normal course of business in pro wrestling, uh, feathering one's own nest, shall we say. So, uh, but I had a good visit with them. I, I, I stayed all day. They put me back home that night and we all lived happily ever after. Well, we know it didn't happen, but what did happen is August, 2014, new Japan makes two big announcements that wrestle kingdom nine is going to be held at the Tokyo dome on January 4th, which not usually a big deal. I mean, I think it's always on that day. And now there's a partnership with Jeff Jarrett's global force wrestling. Now you might be asking yourself, uh, what? Yeah. This was the first time new Japan presented wrestle kingdom, their WrestleMania on American pay-per-view. And of course it was all going to be happening on fight, uh, as a wrestling junkie like myself, I'm sure you were excited about that, but did you also wonder, Hey, does that mean they need a commentator? Well, you know, it was an op it was, op it was an option. It, yeah. was, it was there to do, uh, they needed a play by play guy because it's a whole brand new presentation. Uh, I was, like I said, I was very, uh, relieved that someone with a skill set and the product knowledge of Josh Barnett was going to be my partner. And out of that developed a great friendship to the last this very day. 
and uh, I have a lot of respect for Josh. I, I like him. He's a hell of a good guy. He's like a younger brother. Uh, and he's always had my back and, and, you know, we would go to, to those to we did our recording in, uh, LA live area, uh, at the offices of a- access TV, a uh, little room smaller than where I'm in, I am now. And then, uh, then the, the time came where everybody built up their excitement about doing a live show on television. And that was kind of, that was something to look forward to. And it was cool. It was, it was a good deal. So, uh, but I, I enjoyed the whole experience of those guys. They paid me well. Uh, they treated me right. You know, I always had a car waiting on me at the airport to take me to, uh, my hotel, which was the, the Marriott there at, uh, LA lives where I stayed. So I didn't even have to run a car. I was, I walked to walk upstairs to the studio and, and start uh, doing voiceovers. And, uh, but uh, they gave me good notes. A little background stuff, much like, uh, Alex Marvez does now for the AEW guys, you know, he's Alex is really great at to putting these fun facts together records, win loss records, et cetera, et cetera, that you can add to the story if you choose to. Uh, so, uh, I got notes. I think I got any Danny Zach, uh, handle that another great kid friend. So it, uh, it's, it started out good and got better. Let's talk about how it all came together though. I mean, when Jeff Jarrett's involved, I mean, my perception is in 2014, you probably hadn't been in any sort of regular communication with Jeff since no. he left with the whole China circumstance years ago. Yeah. What was your relationship? if there was one at all with Jeff at that point, well, we, we, we've been apart for quite some time and, and, uh, had moved on, so to speak. Uh, you know, I, I was never pleased and not, and I'm not pleased today that that China thing ended up like it did. It was embarrassing and it was a lot of false information floating around on that deal. Uh, but uh, Jeff came to me and said, you know, here's what I'd like to do. And you want to do this show. And, you know, I knew what wrestle kingdom was. I knew it was, uh, the new Japan version of WrestleMania, right? It's going to be held in the stadium. It's going to be packed. It's going to be a big crowd. And so let's uh, give it a shot. And so I, I look forward to that deal. It was funny. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to approach it today any differently than I would have, I did then, but it, it's a, a situation where. When I worked with Matt Stryker on that show, which was another surprise, uh, I'd worked with Matt before in WWE, he's a smart guy. Uh, and you know, I, I enjoyed working with him. I, he's a, he's like me. He's a little bit of a wrestling nerd. I just have a Southern accent. Uh, but he was a, a good partner. He was prepared, but you know, normally when you sit down to do a broadcast, you have a producer in your ear. Mm-hmm. Counts you out of the segment, counts you into the segment. If there's a B roll, uh, of, a you know, that adds to the storytelling, you know, you, you get counts to that, uh, in this entire show. And I guess that show, Connie was probably four hours, something like that. It was ridiculously long. Cause it's both big time, uh, packed. Uh, I, I just had a. I sat there the whole show waiting for somebody to say something from the truck. Never heard a word. If it was four hours long, we had four hours of silence. Uh, you know, and we had, I had a format except for one small detail. It was all written in Japanese. Oh my God. Yeah. So we have Japanese formats. I can't read Japanese. Unfortunately, I'm not that smart. Uh, and. We just waddle through it. We just just went through it. I've always said in in some somewhat of an egocentric way, perhaps in the ears of many, that if you put it on the monitor, I can call it, right. I'll make an attempt to call it and tell your story for you. If I can see it on the monitor. And, uh, that's kind of how I told striker. So this is how we're going to do it. And you know, you got to kind of take control. And I said, you just follow me. If we screw up, then it's my fault. And, uh, 
So that's what we did. And it was a really unique experience to have a show that big, that important for the wrestling world and the wrestling scene, uh, to be, uh, uh, here. I, my point I think is, is I don't know that the new Japan people and their TV people and Jess people were on the same page, just detail wise. Uh, I mean, we got through it and we had a nice show. I've never watched it back, but people seem to like it. And, uh, and I like what we did, you know, that's where I first saw some of the, the greats, you know, Okada for the first time live, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I was so high on, uh, oh God, what's his name? He just had a great match with, uh, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Yes. He was your guy. He was my guy. Uh, and it was funny uh, before the show, so many of those guys came up to introduce themselves and you find out, well, no matter the language barrier, they were fans, right? You know, they watched, they watched the work that I was doing on others, other, for other companies, but it was a good deal. I got, I got all my money. Uh, you know, Jeff, I, I worked out a deal where I got a piece of, uh, the pay-per-view sold good in addition to a guarantee. So Jeff treated me fine. Uh, you know, and you can't, you can't, you know, you can't just live in the past. Uh, I mean, like I said, the, the, the China thing was not handled well, and I'll take my share of the responsibility for that. Uh, and it strained Jeff and my relationship, which is what it was. Uh, but over time I kind of got, I got over that and I think he did too. I see him, I saw him last night. Uh, in, in Jacksonville. So did you think this would be a one-off that you were going to do that first Tokyo dome wrestle kingdom show as a one-off and then it yeah. grew from there? Yeah, I thought so. I thought it was a one-off all along and I, I wasn't praying that it would be, I mean, you want more work, you know, and as more work means more paydays and you know, this, we're not, in the, we're not amateurs. We want, we need, we need, we work for paydays. So, uh, I thought it would probably be a one-off for me. Cause I was at a, I didn't really know where my future was going to lead me, but I was going to cover my ass with boxing and MMA and, uh, things of that nature to, uh, you know, keep me rolling, keep those paydays coming in and keep me connected to the business that I love. So it worked out pretty good. I, I had a, I had a great experience, you, uh, you and it's challenging. It's hard to do a show. In a, in a, in a room on a, watching a TV monitor, uh, it's hard. It's challenging because you lose some of the ambiance and some of the feel, the atmospheric feel, uh, when you, or you're in a sterile studio. Now it, business picked up, uh, without question. When, uh, we went to the, the live shows, the show in 90, what, what year was that show? Connie, uh. Uh, that I did there that with Jeff and those guys, 2014, that was the, um, when the announcement was made, but it was January of 2015 when the show happens, the announcement that you're going to be calling your first wrestling program is made on November 11th, 2014. And of okay. course, uh, we know that, you know, you, uh, you credit Barry Bloom with helping put the deal together, but you also right. wrote in your blog that a big part of making that deal happen was you and Jeff talking to really close the deal. Um, and you would even, you know, that's the thing I really want to circle back to is I think a lot of people perceive as wrestling fans that there was some issue with you and Jeff and some lingering hurt feelings. And you even, you know, said, Hey, even to this day, you're not happy with the way the whole China thing went down. No, I'm did, not. Did you guys sit down and have a conversation about all that and put it past you or, or what? Absolutely. Like? Let's don't fly all the way to Japan and do a show in foreign soil with a whole brand, with a brand new construct, uh, construction, a uh, brand new production crew, uh, and not get our business taken care of. And so that didn't take long. It wasn't like a major deal. Uh, you know, uh, I, I accepted, uh, I find and my life that if I accept more of the responsibility for something that didn't go well, it, it, it generally ends up better than not. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's kind of where I was with that thing. But we had, we chatted 
and, and like today when I see him, you know, at a AEW event, everything's cool. I don't have any issues with Jeff. I'm happy. He's doing well on your, on adfreeshows.com and he seems to be putting his heart and soul into it. So hopefully folks give it a shot and listen to it. Uh, but yeah, we, we saw all those issues. You can't go with an open wound, no pun intended for me. You can't go with an open wound without addressing it. It's not going to heal. And so we needed to talk and we needed to get all this stuff out and, and it was good, but you know, everything that I was, I needed, you know, I had, I had the business class airfare, you know, the big, nice reclining seats and all that stuff, uh, with Jeff and Karen. Uh, so it was, it was, it worked out fine. It really did. It's, and a lot of it's just a matter of communication, you know, say, Hey, let's get past this other issue and move on. And, uh, it was uncomfortable for me that day. And I think it was Cleveland that we did that, uh, business with China and, and, uh, yep. Jeff. So, uh, you know, I, I, I just want to get past it. Let's move on. It's not going to, it's not, it's not an issue anymore. It should have probably never been an issue to be honest with you, but it was, and we got through it. I'll say that. Something else I want to mention is this wasn't your first time calling a new Japan or even a Tokyo dome show. You were a part of those 91 and 92 shows where WCW right. was involved and taped those. Were you attending those and doing that live? Or is that something you did a voiceover for after the fact? Uh, we were there on site. Shivani and I were there on site and uh, we we're there two or three days before, uh, the event. Uh, and, and it had a great time, you know, we were, we were, it was, it was back in the old days where the, uh, alleged Yakuza guys were, were act as, acted as your host. It was very unique. The, the, and, uh, I, I mean, I, they had a party for us. They had a party for us in, uh, some club that they had basically rented or taken over. It was loaded with women uh, and, uh, hangers on, we call those doppelgangers, something like that. They had all their contacts are there, their business contacts. And I remember being taken back to my hotel, uh, in uh, Rolls Royce convertible. There you go. Yeah. And, uh, they wanted to put the top down. It was cold too. So, you know, I'm not going to say shit with a mouthful a deal like that, man. It's like, I don't want to offend anybody and yeah. lose my, th lose my thumbs or something. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it, they treat us great. I mean, it was like a, it's like you uh, we were felt like we were being recruited. Right. And let's build a relationship. Let's, we're going to have, you are going to make sure you guys have some fun. Uh, the, so when you go out to eat, uh, it was phenomenal. It was just, you know, they, I don't know how they found these places. So they're maybe, and then maybe it's been regular stops, but boy, it was just amazing. So it, they made a very positive lasting impression. Did they meaning the new Japan office and taking care of us. It was really cool. And Shivani and I did some work from the student, from the, uh, uh, arena. Uh, and then we, I think we voiced over the show back in Atlanta just so they could handle the levels and the audio and all this other stuff. Right. So Tony and I did that in post and again, not a big issue. When you work for WCW back in those days, we did so many things on, with post and keep with Keith Mitchell's crew down in the production facility there at the CNN center. So post was nothing to me, nothing to Tony. We done them. You just go do it. Somehow or another, you put yourself in that mind frame and give it your best shot. Well, we know that this is going to be, uh, a big moment in your career. You know, you've been on the sidelines of professional wrestling through the rest of 2013 and all the 2014. So come early 2015, when you finally aren't calling boxing or MMA, but you're calling professional wrestling again, it's for a brand new product, uh, yep. and, and in a foreign land. And, and you wrote this in your blog. It will be our job to explain the talents, backgrounds, the storylines, etc. While not ignoring holds strategy, the transitions and the basics of presenting each match 
as if it were a legit sporting event without insulting the audience. So I really like that breakdown of, of what your role is. But I guess the bigger question I had was how were you preparing? Were you getting tapes and footage to sort of learn, you know, all the players and the storylines and all that ahead of time? I mean, you told us when you sat down at the table that the format and the production notes and all that were in Japanese, but as far as just <laughs> familiarizing yourself with the product, yeah. did you do some, were you able to get some homework done before you took the flight over? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, there's so much information online and, uh, I think that was when I was going through my, my little iPad first stint with using an iPad. So yeah, I, I looked at all, all over that I could. And I talked to people, uh, that had an infinitely more knowledge of the Japan product than I, I'd always been a fan of their work. Uh, and, and I got to know some of the guys back in the early days, the seventies and the eighties. So, uh, I, I had, a I had, I had, I had, a, I had, I had to prepare, you know, I was, I was, I was going to prepare, uh, our friend, Dave Meltzer helped me some, to be honest with you. Uh, cause he's such a, uh, proponent of that, of that genre and that product. He knew more about it than anybody that I, I knew. Uh, at that point in time, and then other guys jumped on and would, would have phone conversations or whatever. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, you got to prepare, especially in a situation where there's all for this audience in America, it's going to be the first time many of them have seen Okada or Naito or, or any of these cats, you know, and, and again, uh, the rock star of the show to me was, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, Shinsuke. Uh, he, he reminded me of a wrestling version of Freddie Mercury. Yeah. I remember you saying he, that in the hype videos. Yeah. He just, he just exuded charisma and confidence. And of course, Okada a little bit younger than there's that shot there. You gotta check us out folks on uh, YouTube. It's a lot more fun to watch on YouTube, I think. Uh, but, uh, he, he, uh, Nakamura mesmerized the crowd. You could tell that the passing of the torch was coming regarding those two men. We just saw on the screen Nakamura and Okada. Uh, you could tell the change of guard was in, in process. Uh, but boy, this, uh, I never felt a crowd that big that, uh, I, I thought that one guy had the whole crowd in the palm of his hand. And I had it that night with, uh, Nakamura. And I remember telling the guys at WWE back in the, back in early back in that era, I said, man, if you ever get a chance to get this dude, he's perfect for, for WWE. He's got charisma. He's got a lot of sizzle. Uh, you know, he's a tough guy. His kicks are toxic. You know, he's a, he's a hell of a psychologist. So, uh, I, I, I just, it was a, it was fun as hell. Uh, cause that came at the end of the night, so to speak, uh, the Okada and the, uh, Nakamura inclusion in the card, their matches are toward the end, obviously main event level stuff. And, uh, I just, uh, I was, I was, I was in awe. I hadn't been around a talent in a long, long time that just captivated the imagination of that many people in one sitting. It was awe inspiring. It's, uh, it's crazy to think how this all came together too. I mean, there's a report in the observer that you actually did a voiceover for the pay-per-view highlight package and you did that without ever having a deal in place. So have the deal not come to fruition. It would have never seen the light of day and something that didn't see the light of day is Mike today being on this show with you. It's reported in the observer that there was hope that they, they could land Mike. And of course, Mike had a relationship with Jeff and, and that probably makes sense. And. I'm sure you wish you had an opportunity to work with Mike, but the yeah. real deal is you're the draw from the American pay-per-view side. Now let's just add the context here. This is January of 2015. So a lot of the American wrestling audience who was strictly watching TNA or WWE at the time is not going to be overwhelmingly familiar with Nakamura or Okada or Ibushi right. or Tanahashi. They're not the names they are now because of the exposure. Uh, of the new Japan product here in America or their relationship with AEW. 
So yeah. when you're on the call, I mean, I'll admit this is the first live new Japan show I ever watched. Like I had seen clips, I had seen tapes, I had seen DVDs, but to actually sit down and watch a Tokyo dome show as it was happening, you on the call is what motivated me to make oh, that really? happen. And I know that Kevin Sullivan, who recently departed AEW, he's, he's another Jeff Jarrett guy. He was helping put together the, the packages for YouTube and things like that to promote the pay-per-view. Right. Uh, he, did, he did a good job too. I'm sorry, Conrad. He did a good job of that too. Quite frankly, that was, and seeing those little clips, those little, uh, I looked at them as motivational clips, but they were programming. Uh, they helped a lot. They helped a, a tremendous amount because for me, even as a wrestling guy, uh, the seeing some of these cats in, in action was a, a first, Yeah, well, not across the board. The big stars, you'd kind of got a clip here, a clip there, but the, the undercard and things of that nature, you know, they had so many tag matches and things like that. So, uh, anyway, it's, uh, it was fun. It was a fun show for sure. Uh, the observer would write for people like AJ styles, Carl Anderson, and everyone in the IWGP junior tag title match where they've never had Jr. call their match. It's a real big deal. The young bucks and Kyle O'Reilly have talked about how they consider this show between appearing at the dome and Ross announcing as a sign that all their hard work for years has paid off and they've made it in wrestling. Wow. Man, that just nice. jumps off the page. I did just the idea that, yeah. okay, yeah, it's a yeah. dope show, but Jr is making the call. I've made it in wrestling. What a sentiment. Yeah, it really was very humbling. Quite frankly. Uh, it just shows you, you grew up, uh, you, you bring all these people with you along the journey. You know, I, I get this every day from somebody in some form that you were the voice of my childhood. I don't know that I, you know, there's a lot of guys that could be considered that, you know, Shivani is the voice of a childhood, uh, 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 you know, but I would have loved to work with Mike because Mike today would have had more information, uh, on, uh, on the Japanese wrestling scene and he knew the individuals. So, uh, it would have been really cool. It just didn't work out that way. I don't know what the situation was, you know, Generally it's creative, creative has issues with, uh, uh, cr cash and creative. So maybe they didn't have the, maybe Mike wasn't interested. I don't know. Uh, I just, I was disappointed that he wasn't going to do the show. Cause I would have loved to have done that show with him and I would have learned a lot. Right. I would have learned a lot about the Japanese market. It would, I'd have been better prepared. Uh, cause to be quite frank about it, striker and I didn't spend a lot of time together going over the show. Uh, I mean, all we had was a list of matches. We knew who was going to wrestle. We didn't know about the B rolls or the video packages or anything along those lines. So, uh, it was a unique scenario to say the least. We should also mention that this show, um, this first ever wrestle kingdom show is going to be the first American pay-per-view version. It all happened through fight. Of course, new Japan world was launching where, you know, you could sign up for new Japan world and it's like $8 and 42 cents, but you could also order the, the pay-per-view on fight and it was $35. And I guess that was a bit of an issue with Jeff and new Japan at the time. Um, but we know, Hey, no matter how you got it, it was going to be a great show. And one of the other rumors along the way, once Mike tonight, it feels like it's not possible. There's uh, rumors that Chael Sonnen, a guy who you called MMA with might right. actually have been your partner for this wrestle kingdom show. Was that a suggestion from you that, Hey, what if Chael did it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, Chael Sonnen is one of the most talented guys I've ever worked with or been around or friends with. We've got a great relationship now and, and did then I just thought he's a winner. He's going to make sure that he understands the product. He's going to do his research. He's a very cerebral guy. Uh, and, uh, I would have loved to have worked with him too. Uh, there's a lot of guys I'd love to have worked with uh, on that show striker. I think striker might've been without sounding mean spirited. He, he was a good selection because of, I would think one of the main reasons budgets, you know, he was going to work at a more compatible rate for his, uh, payday than, uh, a lot of guys. So, uh, I, I, 
it was just, I never, I never was involved in that decision. I was just said, you know, we're going to have a striker help you. Cool. I don't care. That's good. You go do it. You actually wrote, uh, Matt Stryker's my partner. Jeff Jarrett made that call. It's his money. So I'm cool with it. I worked with Stryker in WWE a few times. I've been around him a lot. He's a student. He's a fan, which is important. He'll be fine. And I think we'll have a very good show. We're both approaching it as something extraordinary for our careers, because it's the first time that the Japanese pay-per-view has been on pay-per-view in North America in English. I guess along the way, we should mention the other story that makes the observer as I understand it, in this era, Mike today had a new contract with TNA where he was no longer the lead broadcaster, but he is an on camera personality for TNA. And as the rumor goes, you called up big and maybe Dixie Carter to pitch the idea of letting TNA do the Tokyo dome show. And if they would have done that, you would have plugged the TNA program right? and they turned it down. Is that, is that report from the observer that's, true? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that's accurate. Yeah, I think it was accurate. They, I don't understand the profile of TNA would have been enhanced and, and Mike uh, today's well-earned reputation, uh, would have been enhanced. Yes. So uh, to me, it was a win-win for everybody. Today gets a payday, gets some new money. He gets a chance to display his wares. Cause he had had all the room to talk working with me. Cause out of asking questions and, and brought in things. Uh, that he and I could discuss during the broadcast when it was timely, but, uh, it just, uh, didn't work out. I never did understand that to me. What was the downside of Mike Tanay working, uh, the Russell kingdom show? I, I, I didn't, I, apparently there's something that I'm not aware of even to this very day, but, uh, it just seemed like a win-win to me, uh, uh for Tanay to be on the, on the call. Uh, and, and it, it had been so much fun because he's such a professional and, uh, perfectionist a student of the game just doesn't even do him justice. He's more than that. So it's just one of those things, man, where you, what ifs, a lot of what ifs in wrestling. It's interesting to think about, you know, how that could have been. I mean, I would have loved to have seen you and today on that call. I think the issue was probably once upon a time, that whole TNA new Japan relationship fell apart based on the treatment of Okada and a few others, but. Um, maybe there was some hurt feelings on both sides when it was all said and done, but it winds up being Matt Stryker. Dave Meltzer would say it came down to Matt Stryker and John Pollock of the fight network. Of course, we think a lot of John, he yeah, is an good expert guy. in new Japan pro wrestling. And Meltzer said that's who he hoped would be doing it. Other names that were selected or suggested along the way were Mauro Ronaldo and, and Dave would be sure to say that wasn't possible. There was a budget issue. Kevin Nash, who is a friend of Jeff Jarrett and, uh, Dave would say he's not sure how seriously, and, and he doesn't think he would ever be a serious consideration, but John Pollock was, um, did you have any, I mean, I know it's ultimately Jeff's call, but did he solicit yeah. advice from you? Like, Hey, what do you think? And you went yeah, with striker ab- too. Ab- yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, no different. You would do a booking. Hey, we're going to do a program with you and so-and-so and are you okay with it? Sure. Or, or no. And here's what my concerns are, or there are no, no concerns. Yeah. We communicated, which was good. It got us past our, all that other stuff we previously talked about with the China scenario and that embarrassing day for all involved, including me. So, uh, but get over it, JR and move on. So that's what I did. I tried to do that, but I, uh, John Pollock would have been a great partner because he's another guy, a student of the game passionate, you know, he followed the product a lot closer than I. So, uh, he would have been great. He would have been great. Uh, even though he's not an experienced broadcaster in that arena, uh, he was just a, he, he would have been terrific. It's so, like today, a lot of, there were a lot of talents out there that could have added to that broadcast, uh, the striker and I did, uh, but you know, like I said, uh, today's extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, would have been phenomenal. Uh, Pollock would Pollock didn't have quite as much sizzle because today had all that TV exposure. And again, I just thought it was a great way to build a TNA brand or what they're doing or pay-per-views or what have you, you go pay-per-view to pay-per-view on your promotion. That's not a bad s- concept. So it's just, uh, unfortunately it's one of those things where it just wasn't meant to be. We sure tried. We sure tried to get that worked out, but, uh, couldn't get it done. 
Well, we do, we know that the other thing that doesn't get done and man, this would have blown my mind. I, I remember reading this in the observer and getting excited about the possibility. Dave Meltzer, I guess Jeff exchanged some emails with Dave about, he could have been the potential partner. We know it winds up being Matt Stryker and, um, the show ultimately does between 12 and 15,000 buys here in the United States. That seems pretty damn strong when you consider once upon a time, you know, that's, that's where TNA was doing monthly pay-per-views. And now here you are without television All and right. really just you hammering, you know, the, uh, that you're going to be on the call and, and, and a lot of fabulous matches, but with a lot of performers that were largely not household names here in America at that point, did you consider right. that a success? 12 to 15,000. Yeah, it helped. I, I, I did all the, I, 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 I saw what I was, what money I was going to make. I got paid a fee Yeah, and then I got paid a bonus for uh, each paper you sold. And that was one of those deals that uh, good old Barry Bloom cut for me. And it was a good deal. We made money. We made good, money. It was a good payday for us, for Barry and me, uh, and but I, I did back to what you said, or you talked about earlier. I, I did perceive it being a one-off. It's just, things are so fluid, you know, all of a sudden I figure out, well, I got a, I got a chance. There are people that are interested in me doing boxing. Uh, you know, I did all those boxing events in Vegas, uh, there, uh, downtown. Uh, and, uh, I, I, I just, it just worked out. I mean. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the, uh, pre- pre- preparation for the show. It was something new again for me. It's challenging. It wasn't going to be easy, but you know, you wonder how the, your audio is going to be, or, you know, I was trying to talk to people about uh, audio levels and things like that until I realized, hell, they don't speak English. Yeah. And my English is not great. Uh, as we all know, and your Japanese However, is even worse. Japanese is not going to, that's really bad. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was an interesting day. I, I, if, uh, if there are broadcasters of any ilk listening to our show today or watching our show on YouTube or listening to it, uh, on the wonderful ad free networks, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I, I'm, 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 it was just amazing of what all we accomplished and it. If, if they were, they saw about our equipment, the lack of communication. I mean, the one, the best example I can give you, Conrad, is what we've already talked about, that the formats were written in Japanese. Yeah. So what the hell I, I was, have, I was, we were at, we were at a disadvantage. My experience took over because it was going to be up to us to make this thing work. As far as the uh, uh, English speaking broadcast was concerned didn't have any expectations of how many buys it was going to get. Cause I had no, there's no track record. There was no precedent. So, uh, I wasn't counting my money before I got paid. Uh, cause I didn't, you know, my big money was going to come with the, uh, I think I made a buck, uh, a buck, uh, uh, pay-per-view extra. So if it did 15,000 buys, I made 15 grand extra money. Uh, so. But in knowing, I thought that was very handsome. I thought that was a very generous, uh, scenario that Jeff agreed to with Barry. And, uh, so it, it just was, it was, it was interesting to see how it all continued to come together. Uh, I remember, you know, the flight over, I'm flying with Jeff and Karen and there might've been others on that flight too. I think there were, uh, so it was, uh. It was good. You know, it was, it was a good situation. So, and I, I always appreciate Jeff for uh, bringing me on board. Meltzer would say, as far as the announcing went, it was a unique experience. Ross and striker were out there with little, but an English format sheet. There was no producer, no direction. They'd never worked together. They were never shown on camera. And once, once they even continued to talk over a Japanese video package because they had no clue it was airing until they saw it on their monitor and stopped. They didn't know the finishes and they were told to sign off after the interview with the winner in the ring. So they signed off, but the show continued a few more minutes ending with Tanahashi after retaining his title over Okada posed and the pyro went off. They looked a little disjointed. It was completely unfamiliar surroundings for both. 
while both had studied book knowledge of the competitors, it was still very much a new experience, but from the fourth match on, they really clicked, uh, right. boy, that he really lays it out of, of what sort of challenges you were trying to overcome, but said, Hey, by the fourth match, it was like riding a bicycle, huh? Yeah, it was, that's good for us. That was a good advancement, I guess, uh, how quickly it came together. Striker was a good listener and that sounds very egocentric and God damn JR's got, he's full of himself today. You got to have a leader. You got somebody's got to lead the dance. That was my role. That's what I was hired to do. Striker understood it, had no problem with it whatsoever. So, uh, and I'd been around Matt quite a bit and we got along fine. You know, I always kid him about being a nerd. Uh, and he was, maybe still is, but, uh, he came through. He came through because he, he got into a deep water situation because, you know, where you're, you're always used to having somebody in your ear to give you traffic directions. And we didn't have that as uh, Meltzer pointed out. Well, we know that, uh, it's going to be a successful event, you know, Kyle O'Reilly, Rocky Romero, Kenny Omega, Alex Shelley, the young bucks, they're all on this card. And, uh, you would write that, you know, doing this show means you're going to miss your birthday. You're going to miss Vegas in the UFC and and you're going to miss the Oklahoma bowl game, but you got to do something new. You got to push yourself. You got a new challenge, right? Right. This is, uh, this has got to be a big day for you to get back in the saddle, calling wrestling and not just respectfully an indie show, the the Japanese version of WrestleMania, when it's all said and done, are you, are you happy? Are you relieved? Relief is a good word. I was happy because I thought we did a decent job as, uh, Meltzer pointed out that with the fourth match on, we kind of started cooking because we got a rhythm. Uh, we were Matt and I were listening to the same music and we're, and I was leading the dance and, and he was following uh, greatly. So, uh, but I was happy. I was happy with it. I was happy for the experience and, uh, being in, in front of a crowd that size and seeing how they reacted, uh, wrestling fans are so wonderful, no matter their dialect or their dialogue or their English, whatever, or not lack thereof in this case. So I was, uh, yeah, I was happy with it. I thought it was good. It was a good experience for me, something different, something challenging. And I like all those things. So, uh, it, it was, uh, it was a, a wonderful experience, Jim. I got to tell you, Dave was so complimentary. He wrote in the observer in the final two matches, Ross made Nakamura, Ibushi, Tanahashi, and Okada come across like superstars of far more significance than anyone in United States wrestling, including John Cena come across today. Striker pushed that Nakamura was his favorite wrestler in the world. Ross made Nakamura come across as a combination of the most charismatic wrestler and the toughest wrestler and a real larger than life star to his credit, Nakamura in the match also came across as the best wrestler in the world, perhaps by a significant margin, man, some high praise here from Dave Meltzer. And it was just high fives all around. And there was even buzz after the show that perhaps Jeff had hit on a good idea. So what if he did this same thing with AAA? have you be the English voice of a triple mania? Did you ever hear any discussion of that? I mean, would that have been a, another fun adventure for you? Why didn't that? It happen? would have, yeah, yeah, it'd been a fun adventure, but it, I don't recall that being discussed. If, if it was, it was short lived and and uh, and quick. So uh, would I have been interested in it? Hell yeah, prepared for it the same way. I'd have, I'd have got somebody that's very familiar with the uh, brand and the talents, and I'd have got I'd have got educated. I'd have got. I got prepped, uh, but that would have been another fun experience. You know, uh, it adds to the journey. And, uh, I think we talk about some of those things, you know, my, our new book, uh, business is picking up is, uh, uh, pre-orders are available. We talked about that before. Jrbook50.com uh, is where you can get it. Business is about to pick up pre-order right now. Jrbook50.com. We've actually got a graphic on the uh, YouTube right now with a quote from Kenny Omega. Jim Ross hasn't just been the narrator guiding us along our journey in pro wrestling. He's become the voice synonymous with wrestling. It's been the greatest honor to have experienced his work as a fan and to also have benefited by working alongside him in AEW. 
That's the former new Japan and AEW world champion, Kenny Omega pre-order the book right now, jrbook50.com. And Jim, I, I hope folks don't sleep on this book. And I know if they are going to be sleeping, man, can I recommend eight sleep.com forward slash JR today's episode is brought to you by eight sleep. Eight sleeps pod cover is redefining sleep, leveraging data and technology to improve health. And in a way that no other company is doing. If you're a long time listener to this show, you know, that there was another product that I got really excited about a few years ago. And I really felt like, man, this is as good as it's ever going to be. This is a phenomenal product, but I am reminded every now and again, that there are levels to this sort of thing. And boy, did we level up at my household. I've been bragging about this nonstop to guys like my pal, uh, our gimmick attorney, Mike Dawkins, eight sleep has changed the way we sleep in my household. It's unbelievable. The data and the tracking, first of all, you know, I've had a product similar to this before you recall, I was really excited about it. This feels like it's 10 times colder. I know for certain it's 10 times quieter. I've never been colder. It's never been quieter. It's fantastic. And what's amazing is how intuitive it is. They, they have an unbelievable app that tracks everything. It's going to tell you exactly how many minutes of REM sleep you got, how many minutes of deep sleep you got. When were you tossing and turning? How many hours was it? How many minutes was it? And then they give you a score. I actually might post mine. I was, so, my wife and I are almost competing. Like two nights ago, I had a 96 and she had an 88. Well, last night she had a 95. I didn't do nearly as well, but we trade that data back and forth. I can't believe we have the information here on how we can hack our way to better sleep. I absolutely love it. My wife's side of the bed is a different temperature than mine. It'll even vibrate you to wake you up. You got a snooze button. You've got analytics right away. I, I'm, I'm sleeping better than ever. You know, we, we had a couple of weeks out of this household. We were doing a little travel for my wife's birthday. So we weren't where we had all of our modern conveniences. The biggest one is eight sleep. I, I was, I thought spoiled with another product. No, this is the Rolls Royce. You want to talk about the highest quality. This is it. This is my favorite product that you're going to hear us talk about when it comes to sleep. I've never had anything like this in my life. I can wait for you to try it. I'm telling you, if you're on the fence, if you're having trouble getting good sleep and listen, Jim is big, a big proponent of getting good sleep. It is critical for your health, but eight sleep is unbelievable. Check it out for yourself. See for yourself. The demonstration at eight sleep.com slash JR. The sleep science shows us that in order for us to be at our best, our body temperature needs to drop in the early and middle part of our sleep and then rise in the morning. This does it for you. And you get to decide how cool and when, how warm and when the pod cover will improve your sleep automatically. It adjusts your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. And it fits over every mattress. Think of it as like a fitted sheet, but it allows you and your partner to go down as low as 55 degrees or as high as 110 degrees on separate sides of the bed. Now she can be at a totally different temperature than you are. Not only that, but the tracking and the health metrics, it's unbelievable. My wife and I are sleeping better than ever. And it's all because of eight sleep. There's no better way to improve your day-to-day -day life than better sleep. The easiest way to do it is with eight sleeps pod cover, start the new year, right? And invest in the rest that you deserve with the eight sleep pod. I'm so excited about this product. I can't wait for you to try it. Go right now to eight sleep.com slash JR and get $200 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by eight sleep. I'm going to use this myself. I have one here at my house, but I've got a vacation house down at the beach. Just like JR has a house at the beach in an Oklahoma. I'm getting another one and I'm going to save $200 off <laughs> and I'm getting free shipping because I'm going to eight. That's the spell out the, the number eight. E I G H T sleep.com slash J R you'll get $200 off and free shipping. This is a world-class product. You will absolutely love it. I agree. I, you know, it comes packed to very succinctly and very professionally, uh, just a really professional deal all the way around. So, uh, check it out folks. You save a bunch of money, you get free shipping, and then you subsequently get the best sleep of your life. Simple as that. Simple as that. Check it out. 
eight sleep.com slash JR. I'm telling you game changer product. So listen, a year after your first wrestle kingdom experience, I guess it's November, they announced that you're the lead announcer for world pro wrestling, the new Japan show on access, I guess the talk started in November and by January it's official. And as I understand it, you're not technically employed by new Japan, but by access. Do I have that right? Yeah, I was, uh, I got paid by Mark Cuban's company. Gotcha. Access TV, which made me more comfortable because, you know, uh, he, he, I, I could communicate with Mark. Yes. And I did many times. Uh, I remember what year was that Connie? Uh, so your first call would have been January of 2015, but you yeah. actually started becoming the lead voice there in January of 2016. Yeah. And then Chan got killed in 2017. That's right. And, and that's where my relationship with Mark Cuban really bonded because he made a call to me. Uh, I think I've met, mentioned on social media that she was struggling and she was fighting, uh, cause you know, she never regained consciousness after that uh, accident. Uh, and, uh, so he, and he found and he, he called the guys that access find out how's Jr. doing what's going on. So he gets a hold of me and says, you know, I'll fly in the, the, the best neurologist in America to, to, uh, Oklahoma to take care help take care of your wife. Uh, and I never took him up on it because quite frankly, and it sounds morbid, but I was told she wasn't going to make it. Uh, and she was going to be, if she did, if we did keep her alive, it was going to be on a, uh, you know, respirator. Yeah. And she wasn't ever going to talk. Yeah. It was just horrible. Uh, God bless her. I loved her so much. Still do. So he called me and, uh, uh, volunteered a, a doctor, fly a doctor in on a private plane and to give me another opinion. But, uh, there just wasn't anything there. She just, she got the worst hand dealt to her that she could get. And, and, uh, but that just gives you an example of the kind of guy Mark Cuban is. He pays attention and he takes care of his people. My God, what did you see what he did the other day about the, the bonuses for the, for the, uh, $35 million for the Mav staff. How crazy is that? Does that rival what you're giving silver for Christmas and things like that? Uh, Silva, Silva got a bir unsigned birthday card and a, and a, and a can of Hormel chili for me. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. This is a gift that keeps on giving. When you think about it, shelf life on those cans is fantastic. And an unsigned birthday card. You can use that over and over and over. You can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, you're very frugal. <laughs> very, very good. Hey, Josh Barnett, oh. how did you, was that suggested to you? Did you make that suggestion? How does Josh get the gig? No, I think Adam Swift made that call. Uh, they wanted somebody that had product knowledge. There's old Josh there on our Facebook. Uh, what a good guy, tough guy too, boy. Don't any smart. So, uh, I had never, I had never been around Josh. So, uh, but it was a great, it was a great call. We became buddies and still are. And, and, uh, you know, it's just, we've had some unique experiences together. And, uh, there's another one of our buddies from access TV. Uh, God damn it. I just, his, his name went out of my mind just now. Uh, Mauro Ronaldo had been calling some new Japan and I guess this is around the same time that he would have been hired by WWE. Do you think that Mauro or you got this opportunity because Mauro went to WWE? What do you think of that? Is that right? I don't, I don't, that's not how I got it. Okay. I was first choice. Adam Swift grew up in the Carolinas. Yep. Uh, I'm sure he went to many events in Greensboro. Like we've been talking about with Sting's uh, retirement and the big pay-per-view coming in February or March rather. So, uh, uh, that's what I was told. Adam was a big fan. He always wanted to work with me. I didn't, I had not known him. He was an attorney. He commuted to work from, uh, uh, from the Carolinas to LA. Smart as a whip, uh, still doing great. Uh, so, uh, he, he, I was his first choice and I felt a responsibility to deliver and that's what we tried to do. So, and we did, and we got it done. 
just great wrestling ties everything together. And, and Lord knows, you know, the matches we did on access TV were cherry picked. I didn't pick them, but, uh, somebody picked them that understood the product better than I, and it, it, uh, it worked out real well because you never had a bad, you never had really had a bad match. Never really had a bad match that I can recall. I mean, some matches are better than others. That's just human nature. But the, the, we always had some strong main event matches for that, uh, for that TV show. And, uh, I'm glad that they, that Mark and his company got involved in pro wrestling. It didn't hurt nothing. No, and it for did new not. Japan, it, for new Japan, Conrad, that was a, that was a boon. They get American television. Absolutely. So it was a, it was a big deal. We should mention, uh, they had English announcers for new Japan over on new Japan world. That was Kevin Kelly and Matt Stryker. And we should also mention around the same time as when WWE would quote unquote raid new Japan, they'd, they'd sign AJ styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Carl Anderson, doc gallows, lots of, uh, the top stars that had been enjoying time in new Japan are now going to be signing up for WWE. And you said this in an interview for me, the new Japan pro wrestling business philosophy reminds me of my earlier years in wrestling. I've had numerous other offers, some serious and others just flirting to return to television wrestling broadcasting, but none have had the appeal that access TV offered me. We think my style will fit the new Japan in-ring presentation. Well, we'll know that conclusively in early March plus access TV. And I discussed other potential products and projects outside of new Japan. Were these other projects, MMA and boxing, or what else were you looking at with that was on the agenda? You know, it, it, it was all dependent upon how much, uh, access wanted to invest in other things other than pro wrestling, pro wrestling was going to be their caveat. And the, the, like I said, the group of guys there, uh, like Adam Swift, uh, like, uh, uh, Danny Zach, uh, were just, uh, they're just the fun to work with. They were excited about being at work. And, uh, and, and I love that. It just gave you that anticipation because you needed some help to walk into a little room, Connie and shut the door. And now you're in a wrestling arena. No, or not really. You're just in a little sound room, uh, with a big TV monitor and, and a good, good speaker. So you could hear the crowd noise and all that good stuff. Uh, so, but you got to make that work. Uh, that's part of the skill set of being a wrestling announcer, to be able to master voiceovers in post-production type situations. So, uh, uh, but uh, they wrestling was their thing, but they wanted to keep the door open because they knew I had interest in doing other things as well. Right. So, so they were supportive of that situation. We just never got to that, uh, that level. Uh, I mean, we, we took one more step out of that little room and, and, uh, uh, and did two live, what we do two, two live shows and two or three live shows in, in LA or that area. I can't remember. I know we did. I know we did two cause one was, one was, uh, the situation where, uh, Jay white and choose Robinson, uh, scuffling out by our table and, uh, almost killed me. And the table hit me right into the chest and the heart. Uh, and, uh, knocked me out of my chair and I was lucky. I didn't get hurt to be honest with you. And that's when Josh Barnett fired up and was going to get it, go get him a piece of Jay white and the, and the other kid who we were good kids. And immediately after that incident, they were waiting on me, these two boys and they apologized profusely and they were sincere about it. Uh, and I gained a lot of respect for them for doing that. They were very sad that this situation had ha- had happened. I was happy that I didn't get hurt because I got, I, I dodged a bullet there. And, uh, I know boy, the next day when I got, tried to get up, uh, I was hurting big time. It, it's like, you know, this was, it was bad. There's a nice, that's an interesting shot. I've never seen that shot before. That's why you should check us out on YouTube folks. Really? Josh Jay came out of his, YouTube. Josh came out of his seat, like a, like a runaway train. And it, luckily for the others involved that he didn't get his, his hands on them because he was, he was pissed and he was scared that I was hurt bad. And, and we had developed a good rapport. We hung around together, went to lunch or dinner together a lot, just had a great time. 
and he loved talking wrestling and so did I. So that match with Josh, as it worked out over time, Josh Barnett was the perfect partner for me on those shows. So I was, uh, sucking pond water right there. I owe JR was hurting, but, uh, Hey, we, we made it, we made it and, and continue with the show and, and finished, we finished. And that was all I wanted to do is just finish with a high note. And we, we dodged this bullet, as I said, so let's count our blessings and move on. The, uh, new Japan show on access is drawing 200,000 viewers weekly. As a reminder, you're doing VOs on in ring matches that are a few months old. Yeah. And it made me remember when we started talking about this, that when back when access was called HD net somewhere along the way, they approached you about calling ring of honor shows on that channel. Right. Did you ever have any serious consideration or was that just more of a, a feeler? I think it was more of a feeler. I, I would have, I would have considered it. Uh, even though I was not a long time fan of ring of honor for no particular reason, uh, availability of the network and where I was living on cable systems and things like that was probably an issue, uh, accessibility. So, uh, it was, it was, uh, but I don't know if that was ever, ever moved past just uh, a casual talk at lunch type thing. You know, it's just, it, it was another one of those situations where it was more work if we got there. It, so I, I was, I, I was happy to experiment with that if it happened, but it never did materialize. It's also reported in the observer that you were in talks with Lucha underground, but the deal couldn't get done. Why don't you think yep. it worked out with Lucha underground? Was that just a budgeting thing? Yeah. Money. Yeah. They didn't want to pay yeah. anything significant. And I met with them a couple of times. What's that guy's name? Richard Rodriguez or something. Yeah. And, and, and Dorian from AAA. Yeah. It, it was good. I mean, I, I enjoyed talking with them. Yeah. They just didn't have any, any budget for my role. Right. That was that would made it worthwhile. So, uh, that's why we didn't do it. It just never could get the math to work. I think the, uh, the, the travel schedule for what you're doing here for new Japan means you've got to go to LA like eight or 10 times a year or something like that. Is that right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It worked out fine. You know, uh, I was living, uh, in Oklahoma city or Norman, uh, then, and their non stops out of LA or out of Oklahoma city to LAX, which is a great boost one flight. Uh, and as I said, when I landed in LAX, I always got picked up. There was no issues on travel. Uh, I stayed at a beautiful hotel that Marriott there at LA live is a fantastic hotel. And, uh, then all, all around it was restaurants, Wolfgang Puck's restaurant. And, uh, I think, uh, uh, not Morton's, but, uh, Fleming's steakhouse, things like that. were all, all surrounding it. So I never rented a car once while I was doing that job. And, uh, then when we got finished, uh, the next day we, uh, they take me back to the airport and I fly back to Oklahoma. It started working out really well. I had, I had a good, I have nothing but great things to say about my association with Mark Cuban's company at that time. Uh, Adam, uh, all those cats were just, uh, just good dudes, man. And I, I look forward to going out there every, every time Even it was one flight. I mean, people say, well, how, how can that be a big deal? Well, if you set your fat ass on an airplane, as much as I have eliminating that second flight is a nice piece of business. So, uh, that's, that's where we were on that deal. I, I just, we had a system and it worked out really well. I want to ask, what was the hardest part of calling new Japan? You know, the, uh, I, I, I say this as a guy from Alabama, some of the names had to be a little challenging to, yeah. <laughs> to say with confidence because yeah, yeah. you have your impression of the way you read it phonetically or whatever, but if you've right. not really familiar with them and you haven't heard it before, I could imagine that would be tough, but I also know the move sets and the storylines. Like if this is not something that you're living, eating, dying and breathing, like you have in the wrestling business prior to this, that has to be challenging, right? Yeah, it was challenging. You got to get yourself in the mindset. 
uh, you got to put yourself in the arena that your voice and match is over from, uh, and that's always daunting. So you have to put yourself in the mood, the mood set, the frame of mind. You gotta, you gotta manufacture some enthusiasm from a little bit of closet to, uh, call them matches off a TV screen. So it was not easy, but it was doable. And we, and Josh and I, uh, got together. It worked out well. Like I said, he was such a bonus for me because, you know, like I said, I think he was the youngest IWGP champion ever. Uh, he, he traveled over there to Japan many times as a pro wrestler and as an MMA talent. So, uh, that was a big boost for me. We needed somebody that had Japanese wrestling product knowledge that I did not have that I was trying rapidly and frantically to gain. But it was going to take a little bit of time until I got everything done. For ex- I'll give you an example. You talk about the names. See, I, all of the, all along, I thought the guy's name was uh, uh, Shin uh, K- Kinsuki, uh, and uh, and so the Shinsuke, uh, you thought it was Shinsuki. Yeah, yeah, because that's how it's spelled. Yeah. So things like that, you got to you got to get past. Right. Yeah, Shinsuke. And not Shinsuki. Yeah, my uh, my bartender uh, at my favorite watering hole was watching AEW when Takeshita made one of his AEW debuts on TV. Yeah, and he called him Take Shitta, and it's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> close. But that's not it. <laughs> Takeshita. Yeah. Hey, that kid's going to be a star. He is absolutely. Uh, he reminds me of a young Anoki, long, tall, six two or three. He's a big boy. He is. And, uh, he's got a great aptitude for the business. He's a, he's, he's another one of those students of the game. And the more of a student of the game, you can become in your selected vocation, the better your chances are for success. This kid's going to be very, very successful. He's already successful, but he's getting better and better all the time. He's got, he's got that size too. That's good. Uh, but he's, he's a special talent. There's no doubt about that. You know, Tony Khan's very got lucky on that one. Uh, or anybody else would be lucky as well if they signed him because he, he can play and he's working on his English and doing the things that guys, you want guys to do when they're, uh, in that ballpark, you know, where your English is not their first language, but he's a player. He is a player. And, uh, I don't know where his future will end up being. I have no idea. I don't know if anybody does, but, uh, he's got great success. Apparently, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, waiting on him. Well, we should also, uh, mention that blue chew is waiting for you. If you really want to uh, put on some size, <clears throat> can we recommend blue chew guys? Remember the days when you were always ready to go? Well, with bluechew.com, it's going to make you feel like you're 17 years old again. It's got the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis and Levitra, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost, you can take them anytime. So plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. And the process is so simple. You sign up at bluechew.com. You consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And here's the best part. It's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, prepared and shipped directly to your door, all in a discreet package. But there won't be anything discreet about your package. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. So discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code JR at checkout. Just pay the $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. The promo code is JR, and you'll receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring today's podcast. Always works, never a failure. It's always good. So simple. Let's don't overthink it. Go get you some. Bluechew.com <laughs> forward slash JR. Awkward pause by JR. Hey, so did you want to call the New Japan shows live or did you like the the system they had? Do you think it would have been Better if for some reason you could have been in LA and call it live. Does being live add to it or no? Yeah, absolutely. It helps you get uh, your mind right. It helps you, uh, uh, you know, get prepared better. You know, it's no different than 
you know, going and doing a football game from a studio as opposed to being on the game site. It's just a different feel. Uh, and it, it, it radiates in your body. At least it, it sounds over dramatic, but that's how I looked at it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I love the, the live feel. That's why it's fun going back and like, uh, last night as we record this yeah, at D- daily's place, we were a live crowd, a big, a lot of folks were there. The place is pretty packed and, uh, they made a lot of noise. They were there to have fun and they did. And let's not forget, uh, to the credit of, uh, of the staff, the crew, the talents, it was cold. It was chilly. But everybody worked hard to work through it. And, uh, all of a sudden you forget that it's cold. You know, Shivani and I had little heaters behind our chairs. So we were, we cheated a little bit. So, uh, but I, I can tell you from talking to Tony yesterday, we're both looking forward like children to Greensboro and we're of the hope that we get to call the match, the two of us. And uh, if that works out then great, if it doesn't, we'll. You know, so be it, but I think that's going to happen. At least that's my hope. I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, Shivani and I get to call that match because how many more big matches like that? will we have the chance to call on our crazy careers. Tony's been in the business 40 years. Yeah. I'm, I'm 50 year in the end. So, you know, let's don't be stupid. You can't last forever. So let's do it while we can. Well, as you might imagine, uh, when you start having some success and getting a little bit of momentum, WWE comes a calling out of the blue. Kevin Dunn calls and offers you a deal while you're under a deal with access. And as I understand it, the offer is to bring you in for two years. They say you can keep doing your podcast, the Ross report. You can keep working with access for new Japan. You can still do your live tours because you were doing the, the one man shows, keep doing everything right. you've been doing. But we'd love to have you back. Were you surprised when that call comes? A little bit, but not totally. But a little bit, yeah. Be honest with you, a little bit. Uh, just, uh, you know, I was glad to hear from him. You know, Kevin Dunn recently retired after a phenomenal run. I don't know if anybody in television, pro wrestling TV, has ever had the uh, run that Kevin Dunn accomplished there at WWE. He was a vital part of the growth of the company, smart guy, a survivor for sure. And, and yeah, he was one of the Vince's right-hand guys, you know, Vince used to tell Kevin Dunn and I, in our little management meetings between the three of us that, uh, you know, uh, I got my two key guys here, right. Talent and television pro wrestling is about talent and television. So I was handling the talent side and Kevin was handling the TV side and and, and we always, and he was a big foot football fan, even an OU fan, which won't make you ecstatic, but nonetheless, uh, it was what it was. That's one thing by the, by the way, you know, Alabama is playing Oklahoma on Thanksgiving week this fall. Yep. No save it. That's disappointing. Very disappointing. Yeah. And, and whoever's, whoever's, uh, advising the next coach at Alabama needs to be realistic. You're following a legend. You'd be better off, quite frankly, in the succession protocol. If you followed the guy that followed the legend, that's generally the, 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 the take on that deal. So it's going to be interesting to see who they hire. Uh, you know, it's going to be scrutinized Conrad bigger, like a wrestling storyline. There's, there's somebody's going to find something wrong with it, no matter what, but, uh, following the legend like that is hard. You know, I, Shivani followed solely, which for me, was lucky for me because I didn't have to. And I didn't think about it like in those terms until later on in life. But Tony followed, uh, solely there on TVS and, uh, and did it swimmingly. Uh, so it's, a uh, it's just hard to follow that guy, the guy. And, uh, that's what Tony did. He did a good job of it too. And, and got past it and built his own reputation and his own legacy. That's what you want to do. Yeah. So, uh, it worked out well. Tony's got a Tony's his uh, podcast here on the ad free network is very entertaining. It's fun to listen to. 
you guys have a lot of fun recording it. I can tell. So, uh, people should check that out too. If they get a chance, one of the, one of the better podcasts on, on the air. Well, thank you, sir. Hey, so let's talk about new Japan running in long beach. Uh, they're actually going to have Kevin Kelly and Don Callis show up and then they're told, Hey, there's, there's nothing for y'all to do. We're going to go with <laughs> Jr. and Josh Barnett. Boy, this that is was, a little that, confusing. That was embarrassing. Yes. That was, that was embarrassing for those guys. Communication. They thought they were booked and they showed up to work because they were booked. But in reality, they weren't booked and nobody, for, somebody forgot to tell them. So I felt bad for those guys making the attempt to get there, to be there. It's a little embarrassing. And uh, I felt bad for those fellas because Kevin and Don do are both excellent broadcasters. Quite frankly, you just cut back the bullshit. They're good. Uh, Don's a natural heel. He's a, about the closest thing to Heyman or Heenan that, uh, there, uh, there has been in quite some time. So, uh. I, I don't know, man. I, I had a lot of, I had a lot of feeling about that. I felt bad. I felt embarrassed that that's how they, they showed up and didn't get to work because it was important as important to them to work as it was for me to work. I mean, you know, everybody had their responsibilities. They thought they were in and, uh, they got left out. So I never have felt good about that, how that was handled. We know that, uh, Tony Khan is actually going to be front row at that new Japan show in long beach. I think this yeah. probably would have been one of your first times meeting Tony, right? It was, yeah, it was. We, he, and, uh, he was with Alex Marvez. There, that's a, that's a classic. Where the hell is that taking that? I, I think y'all are at that barbecue restaurant in Jacksonville. Oh, okay. A B B Q or something like that. Yeah. I forget the name, but I know it was a regular spot. When you guys were first running down there. Yeah. So, uh, no, that was good. Tony was, a he, he was, uh, staying at the same hotel with Alex Marvez that the team hotel, so I would say, yeah. uh, for many of the staff and so forth. So that's the first time we had a cocktail together, shot the breeze. Uh, I was in, I was interested in what he had to say. Uh, we didn't really talk about an AEW like situation, but. You could tell he was a special student of the game. Yes. Very special. He, he, he was telling me things I said that I'd forgotten about years ago that he remembered verbatim. Dude, he has a photographic memory. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I always enjoyed our, our sit downs and our talks. Yeah. And then of course, Alex, I've known Alex longer than I've known Tony and Alex and I have that football connection because he's a football guy. So, uh. And a great help right now to the, the announcing staff in, uh, AEW. He's a viable part of the, t of the team that doesn't get the credit that he deserves. A lot of those fun facts you hear the announcers talk, talk about one loss records, uh, what happened last week, uh, et cetera, et cetera, or it's all coming from Alex Marvez and that helps everybody. So I, that's one of the first things I try to do when I get to, when I'm, when I'm at TV is to get his notes and, 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 and read over them right now. I'm only doing the main events, uh, on dynamite. Uh, and then that, that thing I, I'm doing like it airs Friday night on rampage. And it's a pretty good show. Shivani X Calvary and I get to work together and it's a nice sound. It's a nice sound. And we all had fun. We were laughing about after the show, how easy it was. And the fact that we got paid for doing something that we enjoyed so much and had so much fun doing. So I hope you guys will check out rampage on Friday night and, uh, you'd be the judge. How do we sound? Did it sound like we knew what we were doing? Did, were we awkward and walking on each other? I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised of how that trio worked. And, uh, so it was, it was fun for me. I know that. And again, when you're laughing after a show and, and about what somebody said or what have you, uh, it's a good deal. So, uh, I appreciate Excalibur and Tony's. Cause they're the regular guys. I'm not, but they were very open with me and everybody. I got to say what I need to say. I didn't get help back on anything, but that's the, that's the unselfishness and the professionalism of Shivani and, uh, Excalibur, uh, coming through. 
we, uh, we should quote the observer here. There were issues with new Japan wanting their team and the idea that Ross was with WWE as it was Ross put the product over huge. Although given the quality of talent and matches, he pretty much had to still, he constantly referenced Omega and Okada in particular as the hottest wrestler in the business with the former being the best wrestler of 2017 and the latter, which was far further than I expected him to go. Given he works for WWE. You would think he was walking a political tightrope and how much he could put people over, but he ignored that tightrope. Man, this is, you really are in a pretty precarious spot there where normally you're supposed to pull for the home team. But in this case, you kind of have two home teams, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it worked. I just, the talents deserve the best call I could give them. And that's what we provided. Uh, and it, it worked out very nicely. Quite frankly, it was, it worked out real good. So, uh, and I never thought of it that way. I never thought of the political ramifications. I mean, you know, WWE wanted me back under some very favorable for me, uh, stipulations. I wasn't having uh, any of my revenue sources were not being adversely affected. And, uh, that's how I looked at it. And so that was a good, that was a win for me. And, uh, but getting the call from Kevin Dunn, who I worked with forever since 93, uh, was, uh, a good call. Good call. I got to go back to finish what we started. And I thought that was important. It was important. And it was, uh, it was a fun show. So fun that your old pal stone cold, Steve Austin actually, uh, comes to check out the show and, right. and, and believe it or not. New Japan actually runs uh, again, this time in the cow palace. And that's where that moment happened with yourself, Jay white and juice Robinson. The observer had this to say during the white U S title defense against juice Robinson on several occasions, white whipped Robinson into the barricades. Unlike in most places where the barricades are hooked together and will move from a body being thrown into them. These barricades were not linked together. So when one guy would throw the other into the barricade, the barricade would tumble over. They did it a few times and white whipped Robinson into the barricade, right in front of the announcers, Ross and Barnett, the barricade moving knocked Ross backwards out of his chair. And he took a fall. Barnett then said something to the effect of you just fucked up and then left the (laughs) announcing position and chased white around the ring security thinking it was part of the show did nothing. Live fans thought it was part of the show. It wasn't Ross was in great pain flying home and checked himself into the hospital on July 9th. He was diagnosed with bruised ribs and bruised sternum and some lung issues that could possibly lead to pneumonia with the rib injury. Every movement was painful and he had to cancel three commitments this week due to the injury. Ross was even more upset because the night before he'd said to new Japan officials to keep the talent away from doing stuff near the announcing position because they had had to do that in Japan and the announcers usually scatter. So let's talk about that. Do you remember giving them a heads up ahead of time? Don't come over here. And was this the worst injury you ever had in wrestling? Yeah, probably the worst. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I remember having a conversation, uh, cause I couldn't believe how the, uh, uh, barricades were being constructed. They weren't being connected. And so that just set up a very precarious scenario, uh, that came to, came to fruition. So yeah, I, I mentioned it. Uh, and but here's the thing you worry about as a broadcaster sitting at ringside is that you're going to lose your audio because somebody bumped into this, just got unplugged, what have you. It's uh, very challenging. So I remember mentioning it, uh, for all the good it gave, did me. Those kids got in the groove. They. Hey, they were all pumped up. There's a big crowd. It was a sold out crowd. Uh, it was a great atmosphere in the cow palace and to be able to do something in the cow palace was kind of cool for that show. I thought cause of the historic nature of, uh, San Francisco's cow palace, you know, the arena that made Pat Patterson and Ray Stevens, uh, bigger than life. So it was a special place or special time, uh, but boy, I, I was uh, lucky I, I could finish the show cause it was hard. Cause my ribs are all screwed up and I was having a hard time getting breaths. So, uh, but we made it, you got to gut it out, you know, and it ain't, 
as I said before, it ain't ballet. Well, it changes just a few months later, the whole circumstance with access, uh, Jr. would be uh, a topic in the observer. Jim Ross and Josh Barnett will be gone after the next set of tapings. They're doing voiceovers for shows this week, which will be the last new shows of the year. Barnett is at this point out for good. We've had contradictory stories of the reasons, but obviously it is a new Japan decision or an access to decision. Although the first word we got was it was the former. The situation with Ross isn't clear, but based on tweets by both Ross and Adam Swift of access where Swift thanked Ross, it looks like he won't be returning in April. One week ago, Ross was going to be out at the end of December because WWE was not going to allow him to sign a new deal with his deal ending at the end of the year, right. but he was most likely in or to return in April when his WWE deal expired late last week, things changed behind the scenes based on tweets by both and other information we've received. It's most likely this next voiceover session, which will cover every show until the end of the year will be the last show for both Ross and Barnett. Nobody has said anything and access officials have told us they expect to release information regarding the announcers going forward at some point in the next week. So what happened? Why did this come to an end? Your time with new Japan WWE's deal. Yeah. You know, they, they gave me the clearance to do all these projects that you outlined and you grocery listed a few minutes ago. Uh, but you know, I was under contract to them and you know, there's always that, uh, caveat called WrestleMania that you want to be a part of. I yep. saw online the other day where I'd call 17 WrestleManias. So I didn't have a clue. I had to call that many. That's a lot of calls. That's it a is. lot of, that's a lot of shows. Uh, but WWE, when they, they kept Kevin Dunn, kept in great communication with me. Uh, they knew my contract status at access TV and, and Cuban's company. Uh, but th- they wanted me to be full time and not extend that, that arrangement. So, uh, I, I was not going to be able to extend in any event. So, uh, but I, I, I never left there, th- there meaning, uh, LA and LA live and access TV and all that stuff. I never left there, uh, you know, upset or unhappy. It's just worked. It worked out great. I, I, that was one of the most working for access TV, Adam Swift and all these guys was one of the greatest pleasures of my professional life it really was, uh, I wouldn't have traded that experience for anything. And yes, it was daunting. This is challenging. You're in a little room as I've outlined ad nauseum, but that's where we were. We just we made it work. And I had a great time. Those guys treated me like family, you know, Mark Cuban to volunteer his private plane and, a, and to actually fly a neurologist to Norman, uh, was pretty magnanimous, pretty, that's pretty impressive. Uh, unfortunately she didn't last long enough to, to see what the second doctor's opinion was going to be. And, and, um, uh, just didn't work out, but the thought that he tried, he meaning Mark Cuban tried to help me out in that moment was something I'll never forget. And I'll always admire him and appreciate Mark Cuban for that. Well said, uh, Michael was actually asking about that. If you had any interactions with Mark Cuban and what your thoughts were, but we know now what we don't know though, is a great question from Waddles. What would you say was your favorite match you called during the new Japan run? It would probably be something involving, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, cause I thought he was the most mesmerizing talent I'd seen in, in years, maybe a generation, certainly in a, in, a, in within the decade. I mean, he was so over and he was so unique. His body, he was so flexible and he worked stiff and, and all that, you know, I've, I've never thought I had, I haven't seen that version in WWE yet. And I, I think that may be a missed opportunity somewhere where people look back on it. Uh, you can get a lot more mileage out of Shinsuke than, than maybe he's getting. That's just me being, you know, sideline booker, uh, but Shinsuke and then, and Okada, you could tell Okada was gifted and he had something special. Both those guys had amazing timing and crowd psychology in ring psychology. They had it and they displayed it. They told great stories. They were unselfish with each other. So uh, I would think Okada and, uh, and, uh, Shinsuke were 
that match that we did at WrestleMania, what was it nine or not? WrestleMania, Wrestle Kingdom Wrestle nine. King. Yeah. That was a fun one. I, I thought you were going to say Omega Ocala. I know you were really high on that one when that one, I mean, oh, I was, yeah, but I didn't get to call that live. No, she you didn't call it live, but I think you did one on tape. Did you not? Yeah. Yeah. But it's a different deal, Connie. Yeah. It's a, it's apple and an orange, so to speak. Uh, I got to call Okada and, and, uh, and Shinsuke Nakamura live. You, you actually called Shinsuke and Kota Ibushi live. And then, uh, Tanahashi and Okada. Those were the two sort of back-to-back co-main yeah, okay. events, if you will. But yeah, you got to see. I mean, Shinsuke, if you've not seen the wrestle kingdom nine entrance for Shinsuke, just the entrance will set the tone to let you know, Hey, this is, this is different. And then, and then the bell rang and, and it's just, it's, it's different. And I'm glad to see that, you know, maybe with triple H steering the ship a little bit, we've seen more of that Shinsuke, like they're allowing him to do promos in Japanese now and just doing subtitles. And I thought for a long time, that was the right way to do it. I love that. Yes. Yes. I love that. It's authentic. It's off. Auth- it authenticates it. It validates it. It's like the same concept as we say selfishly for maybe Shivani and Jr. to do the sting final. Uh, you know, we're selfish. We want to do that match. It's important for our, for us to finish out this journey with him. And remember, you know, uh, Tony started early with sting, but not as early as I did. Cause I started with sting when he was the ultimate warriors tag team partner as the dingo warrior and, uh, the blade runners, uh, back for cowboy. I was there the night the cowboy pulled a uh, warrior aside and fired his ass. Just wasn't going to put up with this petulant bullshit. And, uh, is he always had an ego problem. Sting did not sting wanted to learn sting gravitated to the Eddie Gilberts of the world. Uh, and, uh, and all these other veteran stars that cowboy had, assi- had a- assembled, uh, and kept learning. That's why I'll always, if, if he somewhere along the way, I need to write down a list of my most admired talents. Yes. Not just because they were great at doing a drop kick or a hurricane Rana, but because of their integrity and their character, things like that, that if you're an administrator, you covet. And I've always coveted my opportunities to work with sting and, uh, you know, I, I can't remember what last night he, he, he's the only guy in the business that calls me Rossi. <laughs> he always has. I don't know why and I don't care. It's great. It's different. So, uh, but the, that, that whole thing in Greensboro is going to be so, so exciting. And hope I'm not building myself up for a disappointment, but oh, I no. don't think I am. Something else that, uh, we got a lot of questions about. Ribera Francis Reyes wants to know, did you ever get to eat at Ribera and, uh, what was your go-to order? <laughs> no, Francis, I didn't, uh, I never got to go to that place. Uh, I've heard of it. It's a very famous place for the wrestling world. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I've ever been there. It blows me away. Uh, I, I just assumed you would have been there. Yeah. Well, me too. In, in hindsight. So. But no, I, I, I didn't, I, but I enjoy the culture there so much. The fans are so passionate. You know, I remember walking from the hotel, uh, to, uh, the arena and, uh, being around all the fans and stuff. I, I kind of, to many of them, I went unnoticed, which is fine. The only thing they could pick me out of the crowd was I had a hat on. Uh, but I, 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 I enjoyed that, that whole newness, the culture, the fans. Then you find out, like you said earlier, when the bell rings, it's pro wrestling again. Yes. It's really good pro wrestling again, but it's pro wrestling again, where talents work a little snug, not stupid, not careless, but snug. And they tell great stories. They connect the dots. They move it forward. And it, uh, it, and usually it results in a hell of a product. Going to be a hell of a product this weekend. The NFL playoffs are here. I'm fired up. I know you are too, Jim. We're both football junkies. Let's run through yep. the, uh, the wild card round. Let's let you get some picks here. We got the Cleveland Browns playing the Houston Texans. Texans are at home and, uh, the Browns are coming in a two and a half point favorite. You like the Browns or the Texans here? Well, for Jerry Lawler's sake, I like, uh, I hope the Browns uh, 
perform well. This game is all about uh, C.J. Stroud to me, Connie. Uh, he's having a hell of a year now that he's healthy. He's a rookie quarterback that's lighting it up. So if if uh, if the Texans can keep Stroud vertical on his spot, so to speak, uh, I like Houston winning at home. Uh, I find it somewhat insulting, at least that's how I'd use it uh, if I was coaching, that they're coming to our, our house and they're the favorite. What's up with that shit? So let's change that, that, that philosophy. So I think Houston will win the game. I'd take the points, but, uh, uh, I don't know how long this Joe Flacco thing is going to last. You know, he may have a hell of a game. I hope that he does, but I, I'm, I'm thinking that Houston can win primarily because of the home field advantage. I'm pulling for the Texans as well. I'm pulling for Domenico Ryan's. I think he's, uh, one of my favorite Alabama players of all time. And, uh, I'm thrilled with him in his first year making the playoffs. So let's go Texans. I'll take Texans and points boy. Saturday night is going to be an interesting game. I love the Miami dolphins. And of course their Alabama quarterback, Mr. Tua coming to town. They're a four and a half point underdog. The chiefs are hosting. They're a four and a half point favorite. And somehow this might actually be the coldest game in NFL history. It's supposed yeah. to be five degrees on Saturday night. The wind chill will be minus 10. And for that, I think I like the chiefs. What say you, I think, uh, the, the weather's a big story here. Yes. It's a huge story and turnovers turnovers are inevitable Saturday night in Kansas city. This is one of those situations where TV really rules the roost because in all honesty, uh, the Kansas city chiefs game should be played in the daytime this time of the year. So, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I, I believe that, uh, that's just a TV's decision because it is a very desirable game. It will get a great rating. Yeah. People like you and me are curious to see how the weather is going to affect them. Sure. It will, if it will affect them, but I think that Kansas city, uh, it will have less effect on their game than it will the dolphins who I think will be adversely challenged by the weather. So, uh, cause they're not used to playing in it. They're not used to practicing in it. Somebody said they were practicing all week outside and, and down in Miami and it was like in the seventies or eighties or something warm, uh, but it ain't going to be warm Saturday night. No, it is not. So we'll see how they all respond to that, uh, uh, mother nature element. Remember Conrad, mother nature doesn't do any jobs undefeated undefeated. So we'll see who can, uh, who can work their way out of that conundrum. Uh, the chiefs are the dolphins. I like the chiefs. Probably going to be a chilly day when the bills are hosting the Steelers this Sunday, the bills are a 10 point favorite Steelers, a 10 point underdog at Sunday noon kickoff here central. What do you think bills or Steelers? Uh, I think the bills are hot. The quarterback's playing pretty well. He's not self-destructing. He's got a powerful arm. Does the quarterback, what's his name? Allen. Yep. Uh, uh, and a, he's a good player, big, strong son of a bitch. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I like the bills. I Me think too. they're, they're peaking at the right time. Uh, and they're playing at home. I make a big deal out of playing at home, but even though you're a pro playing at home, sleeping in your own bed and so forth and so on is a, a viable consideration. So therefore I like, uh, the bills to win. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, the game that I know a lot of our listeners are going to be excited about the Dallas Cowboys. They're hosting the Packers. It's a three 30 central kickoff this Sunday. The Packers are a seven and a half point underdog. I like the Cowboys minus seven and a half. What do you think? I, I see, I read a lot about the football like you do. Uh, I, uh, hear all this rumblings that, uh, this could be a trap game for the Cowboys. Yes. If they were playing, if they were playing in green Bay, I'm with you, but they're not. And we all know how well Dallas has played at home. Uh, the home field advantage for them is very significant. So whether they cover the spread or not, I think the Cowboys will win the ball game. It's, well, all, it's all, a lot of this depends on how well Jordan love plays. Yes. You get the quarterback off his spot. You make him move around, make him uncomfortable. That was always the game plan on Tom Brady. We got to keep getting, get him to move around. Cause he's not the most athletic 
quarterback in the league. So, uh, but I, I like, uh, I, I, I just, I think the weather has a big issue this, this time of the year. And again, you know, having that Kansas city game at night, where it's going to be the coldest and the conditions are going to be the worst seems to me to be, a not a real great decision, but I understand why they're doing it. It's a TV game and TV runs the game. Prime time is what we'll be seeing for the Rams and the lions. The lions are hosting. They're a three point favorite. Uh, this is a tight one. What do you think Rams or lions in Detroit should be a hell of a game. The battle of those two quarterbacks who have a history with the, in the Detroit market. Uh, I like the head coach at, uh, Detroit. I think this guy's a gut. He's got what it takes. He looks like a football coach. He acts like a football coach. He talks like a football coach and the fact that they're playing at home, you can only imagine the level of enthusiasm and excitement. It's going to be in Detroit because they're playing their first playoff game at home and forever. So I, I, I'm a lean toward, uh, Detroit, but it won't be easy. Sean Payton, or excuse me, uh, uh, co- the coach at, uh, what's his name at, uh, LA Sean, uh, shit. I can't think of his name right now. It slips in my mind. Uh, he's so, a good Sh- coach. Sean McVay is the Rams coach. Yeah. That's the other thing. I try yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Sean, Sean McVay, really good coach. He'll have his team ready to go. They seem to be peaking at the right time. They got some young receivers that are playing very well that, and some of them to be quite honest with you, I'd never even heard of, but, uh, McVay has made them into a, a good team. And again, one of the arts of coaching is to get your team to peak at the right time. And maybe that's for LA. Maybe they're, or the Rams are peaking at the right time. They will be well prepared. There's no doubt about that. But I do think the home field advantage playing in Detroit, uh, all that good stuff is a significant, a significant consideration to think about. So with that, I'm hanging my black hat on the, on the lions. Last, but certainly not least Monday night, all eyes will be on Tampa Bay as they host the Eagles. The Eagles have, uh, stumbled a bit lately, but they're still coming in a three point favorite. You like the bucks or the Eagles on Monday night? Well, I, I, I was a big Eagles fan because of some former Sooners on their team, like Lane Johnson, uh, right tackle number 65. He's an all pro this year. The two all pro tackles voted by the players were both former Sooners. Trent Williams, the left tackle, who's a beast and uh, what a sweetheart of a guy. It's hard to believe he's such an animal when you talk to him. And then Lane is a friend of mine. Lane has been to my house in Oklahoma and he's a fan, a big wrestling fan. And, uh, so both those cats were the first team picks it, uh, on the all pro team offensively or right tackle and left tackle respectively. So, uh, I'm, a I, I, I I, I like, uh, I don't know. Well, it's a hard one. My choices are, Hey, look, I, I'm a Baker Mayfield guy. He's a sooner and I'm loyal to my sooners. Everybody knows ad nauseum. I get it. I get it. But uh, if Baker gets hot, he can lead any team to win. Uh, but I don't know where we are with the Eagles. Who are the Eagles? You know, who are we? They're just not playing well. And, uh, they're beat up, banged up. So I I'm, I'm going to lean toward Tampa Bay to win this thing. Wow. Look at you. I didn't see that coming. Well, listen, no no matter who you're pulling for, you need to get some new swag to pull for your team. And there's no better place to do it than shop sportsmerch.com. That's one of the easiest and best ways to support the show here. We have a new affiliate partnership with fanatics. And they are the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear, not just for the NFL stuff, but for the college stuff. So whether you're a Jags fan or a Sooners fan, you can support all your favorite teams and players at shopsportsmerch.com. Or if you're watching along with us on YouTube, just hit that QR code that's up on the screen right now, or check out the description below for the link. Uh, you can shop with confidence for all your favorite jerseys and hats and caps and shirts and jackets and hoodies. Everything you're looking for is at fanatics. And of course you can support the show by going to shop sportsmerch.com. That's shop sportsmerch.com. Same great prices, but it helps the show. So why not try and support 
shop. Help a brother out, out, Connie. Help a brother out, right? That's exactly right. And by the way, if you're just in a giving mood, can I recommend jrsbbq.com? It's good for what ails you. My wife just uh, fired up the grill yesterday. When I got home, she had two grilled chicken breasts ready for us. Coated liberally with JR's all purpose seasoning. We love it. You will too. They got the main event mustard. They got the Chipotle ketchup, two types of barbecue sauce. And who could forget the latest addition to the family, JR's red ass hot sauce, all this and more, <laughs> including action figures and trading cards at JR's BBQ.com. We got sauce and rubs and seasoning. Oh my. A lot of sign stuff, uh, for your selection. It costs nothing to look that's for damn I'm sure. I made some, uh, I've changed my diet since I got sick and, and, and on the, on the comeback trail here. So I've changed my diet. I'm not eating any bread, no potatoes, no pasta, uh, and a lot of protein. I'm eating a lot of protein. So, uh, I buy those little thin cut cause I can't have a grill here in my condo, uh, condo rules. So, uh, I, 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 I cook them in a little like a, a pan, like a frying pan. So I get those thin cut, uh, steaks. They cook quicker. Uh, I can watch over. I can stand there and watch them cook instead of wander away and, and come back when a buzzer goes off. So, uh, I, I used, uh, uh, I've been eating a lot of fish, especially salmon and the JR seasoning on, on salmon on your, on your grill or on your stovetop is a winner. It just is a winner. So, uh, give it a shot. Check it out. I even bought some yesterday, day before yesterday, I, I, I looked at the ingredients, some popcorn and this one popcorn had like three or four grams of sugar and, uh, that's all. So I worked out really good and, uh, but man, the, it, it, it livened up the, the fish. Just tremendous. I buy fish in the morning and cook it that night almost every time. So uh, keep it fresh, keep it good. So, uh, we're still shipping out orders and we're, uh, we, our shipping is, I think we've been very successful in that. You can't eliminate all the human error, but, uh, we, we seem to be able to make it work. So, uh, check it out. We're, we're shipping every day. And, uh, we appreciate your business immensely. I say that a lot, but I don't overstate it. And then also I'm leaving, I'm living and dying on the, on the mustard. It's got one gram of sugar. How do you beat that? That's great. If you're, if you're, if you're serious about your health, the mustard is a very healthy condiment, very healthy. And it tastes great. JRsbbq.com is your hookup. We've also got some new swag for you to check out. That's grillingjrts.com. We got hats and hoodies and cutting boards. Oh my, everything you're looking for. The easiest, best way to support the show is to just check us out on YouTube. We are going to be going live and we're going to try to do it like once a month over on YouTube. This will be separate from adfreeshows.com. Just a, a real deal live, you know, Q and a sort of thing. It's grillingjr on youtube.com. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications bell on. So you'll know when we're going live. And if you've got a question about next week's show, you can ask it on social media. It's at JR grilling for Twitter and Instagram or grilling JR on Facebook. You might be thinking to yourself self. What is next week's show? Well, it's <laughs> Royal rumble 1994. You were doing radio WWF with gorilla monsoon for the show. Yeah. And we've got Tatanka that. versus Bam Bam Bigelow, the infamous Owen and Bret Hart tag team title challenge against the Quebecers. You and Gorilla will move to the pay per view to call Razor Ramon defending the Intercontinental title against IRS. Yokozuna and The Undertaker have a casket match. And of course, the Royal Rumble, where it all came down to Bret and Lex Luger for the finish. All that and more next week here on the program. And if you've got a question, you can ask it on social media. I want to mention too, if your business targets men that are 25 to 54 years old, there's just no better place to advertise than right here with us on grilling JR. You've heard us do ads for some of the same companies week after week for years. Why is that? Well, because it really works. And if you're looking for dudes, we got them. And with our super targeted audience, there's very little waste. Go right now to advertise with to find out how affordable it is to advertise here on grilling JR. 
And if you're looking to save some money in the new year, there's no better t- place to look than save with Conrad.com. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we can help you take care of all that Christmas credit card debt. So don't just make a new year's resolution to save some cash, hook it up at save with Conrad.com. We're routinely helping our podcast listeners get rid of all their high interest rate credit card debt, get down into one low monthly payment, and they wind up saving an absolute boatload of cash. We're routinely hearing stories that families are saving 500, 600, $700 a month. How much can you save? It's free to find out right now at savewithconrad.com. NMLS number 32416. Jim, I never know what to expect when we sit down and click record, but talking about your <laughs> experience with, with new Japan pro wrestling, talking about Bill Belichick, talking about Nick Saban. It's been a fun, uh, it's been a fun show today, man. Thank you for all the time. Oh, thank you, Connie. We were all over the place today. Covered a lot of topical things and, uh, I appreciate, uh, the opportunity to talk about them and, and, and entertain our audience. Hope you guys are enjoying our show. Tell a friend about it, you know, get, get people to tune in and, and check us out. Uh, we appreciate that. We're trying to build a business here, uh, one brick at a time. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're going to continue to do. Our best shows are still to come. No doubt about it. We'll be back next week and every week right here with the voice of wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. And of course it's exclusively on grilling Jr. but you can also be a part of the live show at adfreeshows.com. I want to give a special shout out to Aaron Sheen and Bobby and Josh Fields and, uh, coach Keith and so many other folks who showed up and showed out to hang out with us this morning. Uh, be a part of the live show, joining us over at adfreeshows.com and get your questions in for Royal rumble 94 next week, right here on grilling Jr. with the voice of wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate you very much and we'll see you right here again next week. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad-free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad free shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like title chase, Eric fires back conversations with Conrad and the insiders plus new series like the book with David Crockett, Monday mailbags with Mike Kyoto and Nick Patrick and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early. You can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch alongs, Q and A's and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today. And Hey, when you do the first week is completely free Adfreeshows.com.